ever just have figures in your cart ready to purchase and you just see how much it's going to cost and you're like maybe not <laughs> maybe i shouldn't press purchase <laughs> um not necessarily i think i'm so used to like doing like all the like tax and shipping estimates in my head that I don't think I'm rarely surprised when I get to the card. I think lately on TikTok shop, I have been, I've been getting a bunch of ads for this portable monitor and they're like, it's only $25 in your cart. And then I go to check out, it's like 80 bucks. And I'm like, what the fuck? So no, not, not really. But has that happened to you recently? I didn't yeah. realize people actually use TikTok shop. I'm not going to I lie bought to you. something from TikTok this week. Really? Really? They had a, yeah. They had like TikTok a break. Auto shop. A break and yeah. cleaner for like 15 bucks. I was like, I'll give it a shot. What, like a spray? Yeah, like a spray bottle. Holy shit. I, I, don't, just know I how don't know. I never, I never Wait. see automotive stuff on TikTok, but it popped well, up. What's the benefit like, of wow. getting that from the shop than from like AutoZone? Like it's a tool or like, like a aerosol? No, it's like a spray, but like people were showing them using it and it looked very effective. And I've used this shit from AutoZone and it's not very good. So He's trying to save like, himself 150 a bucks. Is it FC150 for your F150? <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I don't know what I was supposed to get it, but I did order it this week. But yeah, um, anyway, the. Uh, is it something sh- that Equan mentioned there, maybe? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Read it. They sell stuff uh, I would assume bath water and underwear. <laughs> bath water for sure. Wow. I yeah, buy the underwear Bath from water for sure. Dean's no, I, I, I went to pre order the Shin Hati and. Uh, Balin, uh, scroll or whatever his last name is, and I was looking at that seven hundred dollar price tag, dude, and I was like, ah, ah. I mean, even though the pre-orders, it's like, bro, I could spend a lot of seven hundred bucks. I was like, ah, I just I couldn't do it. I'm probably gonna regret it, and I might pre-order them later, but I just I couldn't do it. I was like, fuck no. When you start thinking about stuff in real world dollars, it's really, it's ludicrous, right? You're like 700 bucks. That's a lot of other things for two characters that you probably don't care that much about. I know that's how I feel. Yeah. And we'll get into it, but it's like, damn, 700 yeah, bucks. Like, that's nothing I, to scoff at. I really like Shin Hatsi and, and like I said, Balin. They're cool characters, but it's like in the grand scheme of Star Wars, I mean, it's Disney Star Wars. I, it's like, a just a little nugget of something i can actually like that comes out of it and it's just like i'm almost like desperate for like good star wars and i'm like fuck like they're cool at least right but it's like do i really give a shit i don't know it's like bro i could spend 700 bucks and get a ton of final fantasy 7 stuff you know what i mean or more sonic figures more stuff from tiktok shop yeah you could buy a lot of brake cleaner and yeah, lots of brake cleaner, laptop stands, monitors, a gun. I was For gonna, 700 I was, bucks, you can you buy a pretty me good to gun. It. <laughs> yeah, like, like a pretty good gun? I think like an okay gun for 700 bucks. 700 bucks? I it's mean, like what could... Glock started. Glocks are pretty good guns. What are you talking about? Yeah, not like a really good gun, like a like a good entry-level gun. I don't know who Zach is right now, but I don't either. Uh, He's being like really good. What the fuck? Like, what the hell? He got new hell? glasses and it's all those glasses. Of day. Day. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> you know, I'm fucking out of here. I'm fucking out of here. I fucking quit this show. You know boys, let's host. <laughs> fuck you. Guys. Uh, finally, I hate the show. Fuck you. Guys. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm buying the best gun on the planet. For some, I'm saying I get a pretty good gun. Like, it's pretty good. Yeah, for but I mean, if that's if that's the argument, though, like, I mean. You can make that argument about anything that we we collect, right? Yeah, but so I, when do you make? When I'm does saying, it become good like, enough, right? Not Disney Star Wars, that's for sure. That's where I was like that. I was like real hesitant. Like for just example, the do back that's coming out, seven hundred oh. bucks. I, I'm like, I, that's pretty fucking tempting. But two of these, two of those figures for seven hundred bucks, I'm like, oh, that, I'd rather have. Balin and Shin than like a one second do back. Well, I also. But you also love A New Hope more than A New Hope. Yeah, and my everything. whole collection is like yeah. surrounded. You know, that would probably make more sense for you. But yeah, 
I get your point, but I'm just saying, like, when I saw the seven hundred dollar price tag, I was like, ah, I, I really gotta fucking consider if that's what I want to spend seven hundred bucks on. And I think that's so maturity, far, it though. Hasn't. Yeah, maybe. The fact that you're, you're not there, you go. You're not rushing to press the pre-order button. It's like, let yeah. me think about this shit real quick. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can... immediately went to a website and bought a bunch of Final Fantasy VII stuff because I was like, I actually give a so, shit about this. So what did what did what did you get? I just though? saved a bunch seven. of money. I mean, I didn't spend seven hundred. I didn't even spend. Yeah. Were they like high end? That's Final that Fantasy girl stuff? math that I heard about on TikTok. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, I got the it came out with the second wave of the Polygon figures from oh, like, yeah, you like the those, original yeah. game models. I love them. Did you see the little LED? Um, uh, eight bit figures. Oh, really? I'll pull them up real quick. I I thought they'd be right up your alley. Uh, and then I got so the, you know about the Ichiban Kuji. I know Zach knows, but I don't know. If Excuse you me. Bat, Marco and Batfish know. I so there's know like these said. vending machines in Japan, oh, and yeah. there's or like gas stations. You could go to gas stations. Oh yeah, those are cool. They're like and you little, buy underwear, um, right? Yeah. Um, you can buy underwear in in japan vending machines uh but you could you it's basically like a lottery you, used you ones buy a too. prize and then you'll get one of like eight prizes or something yeah it's and like so, a, it's like a stack of little and you open it and it'll say like a and then you show the cashier and they'll give you prize a and they have some that are like if the like every last card in the box is like a really cool prize so like if you get there and there's like 10 cards left like you're at least guaranteed if you buy all ten to get the cool one of the cool final prizes, but they're yeah. they're ratioed so like, you know every set of the lottery has like, you know let's say one of each of the chase f things and then most of it's like little keychains or like little pencils and pins or like yeah. a poster. It's usually not like everything's a banger, but it's cool shit. Yeah, yeah. and so I uh, they had. They had a Cloud and Tifa from the new game. They're like, uh, I don't know, seven, eight inch tall statues. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, you can only get them in Japan currently. And so I uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a Bayi. It's a, yeah. it's a proxy purchase. You're saying site. a lot of things I don't understand. I'm going to take it to disrespect. Watch it out. <laughs> so Bayi is a website where you could go on Japanese Mercari and buy something. But the website buys it for you and then you like pay them to do it and they ship it okay to you. okay i got it instead of because like or like amazon japan or not amazon yahoo you can't shop there as an american but buy can so you pay them to do it for you um, yeah so i went there i bought a bunch of stuff and i got it like honestly pennies on the dollar of what people are selling them for on our mercari so I'm I'm happy but they're, oh, they're cool. uh, currently waiting for it to uh arrive at their warehouse so I could ship it over here but wow it made me happy I love Final fantasy Yep we know. They have a similar service actually in Canada or for uh, America in Canada yeah. and they'll do that as well like with um some shipping things but uh uh, also, seven hundred for the dewback and a figure. And a uh, figure, yeah. Is a, is a great point here uh, as well. So, yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, here we go. Let's play this one. <laughs> Are you an angel? What? An angel. I heard the deep space pilots talk about them. They're the most beautiful creatures in the universe. Hello there. We are tonight's entertainment. We would be honored if you would join us. you got a billion toys. <laughs> you brought me a doll collection. These are not dolls, Jim. These are commodities. Same as gold or oil. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. You are now listening to the Collecting Weekly Podcast. Joey Lock and the Artillery Park. This is the true form of floor gang right here. Very nice. YouTube.com slash collecting weekly. Thank you very much. That's very cool. Big, big, big. 
Hey guys, my name is Zach. I'm Dean. I'm Marco. I'm Batfish. Welcome to this week's episode of Collecting Weekly. It's a weekly podcast where my friends and I talk about the things that matter the most to us this week in collecting. That's right. We want to thank everyone out there who's listening and watching. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> uh, give a quick shout out to everybody. So thank you. Uh, I'm worried about Zach, guys. What? What about me? I don't know. You're in a mood today. The I'm energy is today. weird, I will say. What the hell? It's it was like energy. a pause. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's play Wait, this what? one. It was great. Something's wrong. I got, oh, I, well, I was hovering on the wrong one. I don't want to do my world famous <laughs> press the wrong it. clip at the wrong time. That was, no, uh, that also, was shout out to Collector Zone for our affiliate link. So. There we go. No, I am fine. I uh, had a good week. Had had my labs and my doctor. Very good. Not so great in some areas. Sometimes some some numbers may be good. Some numbers may be shit. Did yeah. they Might figure out why your bit. balls are so bigger? Oh, I, was gonna I don't know. I got like BBB, and big brown balls. BB. I don't know what's going on. I haven't <laughs> seen the doctor though, so I'm gonna probably get yelled at uh, next week. But uh, that's a next week problem. Oh uh, man, and I'm gonna that's do like, better. I'm going to the dentist in a couple of days, and I'm like, man, I have not been flossing enough. <laughs> Wow. Let's get Have the TikTok water pics that everyone's seeing. Actually, yeah, I got it. It's fucking dope. <laughs> oh, Although I got you? it before it was on TikTok. Oh, and nice. It is mm, like a good idea, yeah. I've never yeah. tried it. Is it cool? Actually, dude, my dentist was like, Have you been flossing? I'm like, No, but I've been water flossing. And what did so, he say? Um, they said everything looked great. They're like, Yeah, you, oh, okay. your gums look fantastic. Because oh, I feel good. like, because sometimes crazy. like you'll go to the doctor and one. you're like, They're like, Do you do this? You're like, No, but I am doing this. And they're like, That doesn't work. I'm like, oh, yeah, damn. No, they like were I'm trying, important. and they're like, uh, that's not a thing. Yeah, that's make believe science, and you're just damn. like, god damn it. <laughs> but the damn water pick actually, it actually does work. Yeah, yeah. Equan wants to see my lab numbers. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you them. There's so many. You know, what they could do for fucking labs. They could put everything on one goddamn page. I have to click to like twelve pages to view also, all the numbers. One goddamn fucking clinic why don't i have to go to the four different buildings to do one fucking checkup it's got to be a like, texas thing like my, my stuff's on you mine is just one so. yeah no yeah. I'll, my fucking doctor's like go here do this go here do this go here do that i'm like can't we just do this all here why are you sending me somewhere else special maybe it is just my doctor i gotta go to no one Fuck gotta it. be yeah, that's time terrible. to switch um well this is an after dark uh but we have a <laughs> very special <laughs> segment that we start off See? All of our best shows with. Yeah, you guys ready? I know Zach yeah. is. Jesus. I'm ready. What the fuck? Okay, you know what? I'm fucking out of here, guys. <laughs> fuck you. Again? Out of here. <laughs> <That was quick. laughs> Remember that? We used to do that a lot. It's like 10 times a show. One of us would just leave. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh we got boy. A sticker for it and everything. I'm here somewhere. Yeah. There we go. All right, Dean. It's time for our very best segment of all time. It's new this week. Yeah, yeah, I was waiting for you to click the button. Fuck. Dude, you're glitching, bro. <laughs> He's always I? waiting for you to push it buttons. Yeah. Uh, what'd you get new this week? I didn't get anything. I mean, I did, but it's not here. So be on the lookout for that. What about you guys? Damn. So I just saw Gigi join the chat. She didn't know Jesus. about this one. So I'm about to bust myself out. Um, yeah, so I got this uh, Batman from um, Arkham City. So this is one that I've been inter interested in a while. It's like a interesting Batman design. I don't know that when I first played Arkham Asylum, I loved the kind of thick um, Unreal Engine 5 Gears of War style Batman, yeah. but it definitely grew on me. And, you know, it's iconic, obviously, Kevin uh, Conroy, uh, rest in peace. And uh, yeah, so really, really cool figure. So I uh, got this from um, Dan from Six Scale Reviews. So Gigi's going to be like, oh, okay, now now it's adding up why we met up when I was in the Bay Area. Wow. Um, yeah, so yeah, dope, dope figure overall. Ankles are terrible. It doesn't pose very well because of the rubber suit. Um, but he made a few modifications. I think he, he added in the wired cape. He may have um, painted the cowl a different color as well. But yeah, came together really, <laughs> really dope premium rock base in the chat oh my god oh incredible. my gosh <laughs> got red-handed are you in uh, art wow. or not we need to know that's for next week <laughs> wow we um 
Wow, we were we That's were the, the guy who th- who three D printed them. I I saw someone uh, using our show as like, you know, yeah. Well, this stream said it wasn't in art, and I'm like, look, man, I'm just the messenger. This is the information I got. So don't hold me as gospel. But uh, how do you like the posability on this one, Marco? Uh, it's I'm just really non-existent, it. honestly. Yeah, it's not <laughs> oh, there. But I was I too mean, busy uh, <laughs> laughing at the. Premium rock face. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, so it's not there, but I think just standing straight up and down as much as he can because he wants to tilt over. Um, so definitely some blue tack for this guy. Um, and I will say, uh, you know, Nikulio recently put, posted some pictures about this figure and he and I were chatting about it before I added it to the collection. He was like, you know, this one's like really prime territory for Hot Toys to reissue for that. Is it the 85th anniversary, the, the Batman kind of uh, license like that they got? A hundred. Oh, maybe it's 100 WB years. One, okay, WB100, so. I think. Yeah, so I think it's a separate license beyond the WB100, oh, right? I, yeah, okay, I see what you're talking okay. about. Yeah, so so we were kind of talking about that. I was like, oh, that's a really good point. I could totally see them revisiting this, especially be you know given the timing of the, the voice actors passing away and um, yeah. you know how iconic this design has been. So, two, two quick notes. I don't remember the shins being so chunky and then shin guards. And then I have a question. Yeah. How's the cape? Compared to like all the other Batman ones, we always hear their crap. Yeah, so he, he threw in a, a wired cape with it. So the oh, stock okay. cape, Sorry, I, that. Um, I don't think is any good, but the wired cape kind of, oh man, on the Batman figures, that's, you know, so essential. And I know with the uh, the Batman figure that Hot Toys just released, I think it comes with two capes. At least one of them is wired. So it feels like they're giving you reasons not to get the aftermarket capes, but for older ones, it's, it's a necessity. I remember... Um, because this is a pretty old figure, right? Um, yeah, I remember it is. Old. There was a store. I'm trying to remember what it was called. I think it's. I think it was called Bookman's Dean in Texas. I mean, this was a long time ago, but I remember when they closed down. Um, they had this and the Gordon and Robin two pack. The uh, the one with I think it was the. Uh, Oh yeah, okay. The, the bat, bat signal, signal pack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are you talking about? Bookman's. Bookman's. This was like when I first met Seth, because I remember Seth went up to uh, San Marcos when they were closing and oh, bought okay. out like almost all the hot toys they had. They only had like two or three, but I want to say he got this one, and I've always been curious about it. Um, but I I do recall him saying that the articulation was pretty poor. But man, you're getting panned in the chat there, Marco. Jesus, oh, it's gosh, funny how this yeah. didn't come up during our conversation roasted, about your meeting roasted. with Dan. Uh, let's see. Ninja Scroll said, uh, Marco, how come lying comes so easy to you? I don't think it's lying. <laughs> oh. if, you know, just didn't didn't tell her the whole truth. But also, yeah, I was going to let her know about this. Not... You just don't you don't want to come home like from the boys truth. weekend. Yeah, you don't want to come home with the boys weekend already having spent a lot of money and be like, oh, by the way, this, I picked up a figure. I had paid for this a long time ago. So it, it was for, for her to know about later. But... You just forgot it, it in so. the trunk. That's that's all. It that's it, trunk. and that's all. So yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, dinner was uh, so roasted. good. He forgot it was in the back seat. <laughs> that's like. right. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, yeah. So, so interesting figure. You're talking about that two pack though. That's one that I've. Oh man, I always wanted that Robin figure. Could be or what is it? Uh, Blake, right? Uh, could be pretty dope. Blake. That was his name, right? I thought it was Drake. So. Anyways, um, yeah, that one. Uh, that set's been pretty cool. Look at this. We got Eddie. Money Mendez. Hey. I got this for you, Eddie. That's why he's the goat. The goat. <laughs> I found a bunch of clips in my. Uh, I was looking for the special clip Marco sent me, and I was like, "Why don't I add some of these in? We'll have some fun with them." But nice. uh, yeah, this is a it's a cool figure. Eddie, did you get anything to this week? I got nothing. There we go. <laughs> so um, I um, we went to Five Below, and. Um, Wrong. I had been I'd been looking for these um what are they called starting lineups? Yes. And I remember lineup. I remember when they first came out everyone was like 50 bucks, bro. Yeah, 50 fucking bro. dollars for these. I I was like ain't no fucking way. Um and so I um these were I think 7.99. Um I did have to buy the Giannis um like from another collector so it was, I think I paid like $12 for it. Um but I, I gotta say they're they're interesting because a lot of the players have like 
like you know like sleeves or like a shitload of tattoos and i guess they chose not to do them i don't really even know the licensing that you'd have to do for that because i feel like you'd have to pay each artist individually and i can see how that would be a mess um but i ended up getting john morant and Giannis. um the jaw i think the likeness is much better but he has so many tattoos that aren't on the figure and then the Giannis, i have no fucking clue who that's supposed to be but Giannis doesn't have tattoos so it's kind of annoying that like his portrait is so far off but these are pretty cool. They come with a stand. They come with a flight stand. Um, four, four hands, one of which has like a ball that's like glued in. And then you also get a flight pole and like a waist grabber. Um, so they're pretty cool. And what's really neat is the jerseys are licensed and the sneakers. So they have like the Nike branding on them. That's pretty um, dope. And like, I don't really know anything about shoes. And I know like basketball players wear like a billion shoes a season. So... I don't know if these are meant to be like their most iconic pair of shoes, but it is really cool. Um, I think when I went, they had Trey Young. Um, what is that dude uh, on the Mavericks? The foreign guy, Luca. They had Luca. They had Joel Embiid, and um, I think that was it. And then and then Ja. But they have like thirty or forty of each of them. God. And man. I've seen like <laughs> whole like aisles of these figures. So. For fifty bucks, really, you really wonder why these sat around. No, I mean they they were kind of cool. Like supposedly, I don't really know how it's supposed to work, but each of them also came with an NFT, and then they came with a trading card, which um, there was uh, a chance to get like a super rare one, like a one of one. But both the ones I got were the the most common version. I mean, it's an interesting idea, but these should have been like twenty five, maybe thirty bucks tops. Twenty five, fifty bucks was max. was wild. 50 was wild um yeah, yeah. but these are, I, I really you know i think they're cool for what they are maybe i'm being a little hard on the honest likeness because i did look at the interbay one the one that's coming out um and it's not great either <laughs> so i don't know but uh it's kind of a shame because i i feel like there are some um there are some uh really fun players that that you know obviously weren't in season one there's also like new rookies that are uh, really popular that I think would have been cool, like uh, Victor on the Spurs. Um, but yeah, I think I'm almost certain the line is dead after it basically not selling at all. Um, you had me Hasbro's trying to website. think, who the fuck is Victor? I haven't heard anyone Victor call him Wem- Victor. Well, I, I don't Wemby. Know. Wem- Wembenyama? <laughs> Just call him Wemby. Wem- Wemby. There we go. The guy yeah. in the Grizzlies jersey? Uh-huh. Uh, are his shoes glow in the dark? They look glow in the dark. Oh, that's a good question. You see the like slight yeah, the... greenish hue to them? Yeah. Let's see. No, that's the Milwaukee guy. The guy in the Grizzlies. Oh, I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, his his have like a strip of that green too. Oh, do they? Okay. Oh, I don't know. This does look more below in the dark. The only thing with the jaw, they didn't give him any guns, so I don't know. <laughs> wow. No, they don't. That would have wow. been cool though. I've but I mean, they're neat. Like I I don't hate the jaw, and Jaw's one of those dudes that's um. Um, I, um, it's a, um, he's like one of like the most crazy, like dunking players. So I kind of want to get the hoop and like mess with it and kind of, oh, they have a hoop as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't see it at the, um, at the, uh, um, God damn at the uh, store, but these were kind of tucked away. But when I found them, it was just like box after box after box of them. So these were, uh, these were cool. So yeah, this is dope, man. Yeah, I think it's such a cool scale to do a basketball player in because, like, you can have multiple. Like, if you liked a bunch of different players, and you know, pose them up and have them, you know, dunking or whatever, or crossing someone over, and you know, someone's ankles breaking, and it's just fifty bucks, dude. You didn't give the ch- the line a chance to succeed. Yeah, it's like. Bro, if you have to charge 50 bucks for licensing, right? You got the player, the team, the brands. Like, that's three licenses you're paying for. So, like, I kind of get it, but 50 bucks is a hard pill to swallow at this scale. If you're you're charging 50 bucks, though, it's got to be, like, mixed media, soft fabric stuff. Like, you can't get away 50 bucks and then to look like this. Like, this this isn't cutting it. Rubber shirts and... Yeah. Yeah. But also, like... 
start off start off a little cheaper to get people hooked on the line and then i guess raise the price i mean as much as it pains me to say that but if you start off at 50 bucks no one's buying the shit and that's exactly what's gonna happen they're gonna end up at five below and you're never gonna make another figure because it's like no one buys this shit it's like no people want this shit you're just charging too much off the rip that's crazy. and their competitor yeah. mcfarlane right they made i think it's larger than 112th it's like somewhere in that in between zone yeah. and those figures were maybe started off around the 15 to 20 dollar range and maybe creeped up to 30 but definitely weren't pushing 50 from what i recall no so it's much just, better sculpts some, and details much better larger no format, articulation much better details but, yeah but you get a stand yeah. guys <laughs> But this, the knee joint lineup. on that one is terrible. I have right. so many. Well, it's NFL it's like figures. a double joint, so this is janky looking. Yeah. The McFarlane NFL line was my fucking jam in high school. I bought so many of them. I still have them all in the uh, in a big box. Wait a second, is that nice, man. is that Hell Divers in the background? I see. Uh, that's the Steam background, or the uh... yeah, it looks like a Hell Divers achievement there, maybe. Yeah, that was, I actually got that with you last night when that I is lost this all my arms and legs. In, <laughs> wow. Uh, Damn. I, like, it took it was, me like, that long to get that? Well, I usually don't die that much, but... Uh, you that's know. not true. Anyways, let's move on. It's always uh, sneaking around, that's fine. Why is he always lying? Oh. Sorry, what was that, Jay? I uh -huh. just said, oh, because of the clown. Oh, I think you had to do this week. <laughs> uh, we have oh, the... Oh, no, just low 15s in Hell Dive. There we go. Sideshow, Pennywise... Uh, finally, we have the uh, pricing information. This one's 285, releasing December uh, 2024 to March 2025. Um, I, um, boy, that's that's as much as the Hot Toys Balin that we'll talk about next, and that one comes with, I think, more stuff, and I would imagine more expensive stuff. Um, I don't know. It's tough to make, you know, an informed decision on um, these figures. I think. Uh, they are showing us some great prototypes. I don't know if the quality will match, but I think with the way that they've been doing things lately um, on the Hot Toys front, and I think also on their own front, it's kind of like you should pre-order to secure it in advance. Uh, and I don't know that I love that. Um, I really, I'm. This is one that I would be super tempted on, but I just don't. I just don't know if they can deliver that quality. Uh, what do you think, Dean? Uh, yeah, I, it looks good, you know, from what we're seeing. 285 is a little high, but you get two head sculpts, uh, some swap out hands, some accessories with the balloons, the little paper boat. And, uh, I think they said they're going to include a stand with it that they haven't shown yet. So, uh, it's not the worst price I've ever heard, but it's also sideshow. So it's like, is it really worth 285 i don't know it looks it looks like it could be but i just i i have no faith that it's gonna turn out this good so we'll see i hope they prove me wrong yeah i'll just i'll just echo what i've said before i just if i'm looking if i'm trying to forecast how the future may look when these figures finally drop when this one drops uh, when the previous one that we talked about drops, which is the Beetlejuice figure, I feel like there would be more people that are upset that the quality didn't match the price than are like, oh, this is actually hot, to or, excuse me, Sideshow is back. They're up to the Hot Toys or other company standard. Um, you know, they're a true competitor in the 1.6 market and their prices can completely be justified. I just don't see that future. Now, the prototypes do look strong, but I just remain very, very skeptical. So, I guess we're just kind of in a wait and see pattern at this point. I think the figure looks really good. I love the head sculpts. I like that they gave the monster hands. That's really cool. Um, I love the different balloon hands and the fact that in the hands you have the um, string wrapped throughout. I think that's a cool detail. I think it looks really good. So I'm optimistic that this will come out cool. Uh, I think it's a really good addition to the horror line, so I like it a lot. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely not the target audience for this. I'm just like looking. I feel like 
close to 300 is definitely a lot, but um, hopefully they kind of uh, surprise people with this one and Sideshow uh, doesn't have their uh, general reputation of it looks amazing or the body ends up being crap or, or whatever it may be. But right. um, this, this, um, this, my, my wife saw this movie or show, I guess, when she was six years old. And it gave her a fear of clowns forever. I was like, why did your mom let you watch this? But yeah, she she won't watch this, the new one, or anything because of that. But I kind of am interested in watching the new ones. But yeah, this this is... Uh, I don't like... don't think I'd ever want anything this creepy on my shelf, to be honest. I, <laughs> but it looks good, so we'll see. I, um, I couldn't get into the new ones. I I don't know what it was, but... It, they just not even part one. No, I I didn't. I, I couldn't finish part two. It was just I was just bored. Part yeah. one. Well, that's too bad. Maybe I I'm just. I think I was, I was just tired of seeing like the Stranger Kids, kids everywhere. <laughs> it was like one guy. <laughs> yeah, it was too much. It was one too much. Oh boy. Okay. I, I, I was the goofiest one. Really. Yeah, yeah I mean, for sure. I, I liked his performance in that in that movie too. But I, was, yeah. I get what you're saying. Like, I don't know that they refund if you don't like the quality. I it's been a while since I've had to do a refund with Sideshow, but maybe if you guys have experience with that, uh, let me know. Yeah. You um, can do a return, right? But that still costs you some. I some think money. you have to pay some money back, but it's been a while that I've returned. I think in one episode, people said that's not true anymore, but um, you have to pay shipping, shipping back. Okay. Uh, and but uh, most of the time, I think they'll tell you like. We'll cover the shipping on this one, but on the next one we can't do that. Or you know, they so try as to as long as you like, don't abuse it. Yeah, yeah. Do they? I wonder if they actually keep track of that. I don't Brenton think so. Palmer. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's like I um, I feel like I've had a number of cancellations where they're like, "We're gonna do this NRD cancellation as a one-time courtesy," and then like three months later they'll do it again. So I certainly wouldn't abuse the system and expect it, but they they're pretty. As long as you're not coming to them, like, if you come correct, I guess is what I should say. Like, don't come in wow. there and, like, you know, be demand rude. it. Yeah, be yeah. nice. If you know, I got to put on that, that legendary, uh, yeah, legendary Zach charm that you guys that all know. And customer love. service voice. Hi. Yeah. The white voice? <laughs> yeah, I mean, credit where credit's due. They're, I've always had great customer service from Sideshow. And that's why, like, I want this to be as good as it looks because it's like, guys, I want you to be successful. They I have want... the resources, though, Dean. They're they're a company that yeah. has the resources to make good shit. They're just now, not living up to it. You know, playing devil's advocate, and I know it's not apples and oranges, and I'll address it. So let me finish my statement. Hot Toys isn't a fucking, you know golden child right because someone mentioned earlier the the bodies were on the clone wars figures were not good or they had qc issues commander cody from hot toys almost all of them the fucking arms broke ahsoka almost all of them the arms broke there's plenty of other examples of hot toys qc being pretty fucking terrible now overall it's a very small minority of their figures that are bad and majority of sideshows are bad i get it but i you know if if one every once in a while isn't great you know it is what it is but it's like i want them to be a competitor because it's like if i'm only my only choices are hot toys and in art it's like you know we're not getting enough figures, right? It's either side the more Marvel competition or the better. DC. Right, exactly. Or the more properties. Hot Toys might not make, you know, X, Y, and Z, but Sideshow will. That'd be fucking cool. Uh, Zach, I mean, back in the day, Sideshow's bread and butter were Star Wars aliens. Hot Toys didn't make all the fucking aliens or all the fucking bounty hunters back in the day. It was like, but Sideshow's fucking knocking them out left, right, and center. That was fucking cool. I mean... Again, the bodies weren't great, and the, you know they do have issues even now. But like, I want this to succeed, so Sideshow can finally be like, okay, look, like, if we make good shit, people will, you know, 
stop talking so much shit about us. So let's just start yeah. making good shit. Because you're right, Marco. They have the they have the technology. They have the 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 power to be great. So it's like, why aren't you doing it? Yeah, just be better. Um, just just get it. Why don't you get it? Um, but I will just say, I'm not rooting like like you're saying. I'm not rooting for them to fail. In fact, the opposite. Like I would love to be wrong. I would love for this to come out and be an absolute banger and, and continue to push the hobby forward. I just, uh, yeah, I have my doubts. I think Dean to that point as well. Like, I think my issue here isn't with like quality control in the sense that like a bunch of Cody's got through that had broken arms. I think that's a different part of quality. I think more what yeah. I'm talking about is like the, the, how, how accurately they can and how consistently they can replicate this level of quality yeah, yeah i think that's kind of more my issue um okay that makes sense yeah yeah but uh it it does look fucking good it it really does um yeah yeah so there's uh definitely gonna gonna be some interesting competition i know i know eddie you had pointed this out as well but the carpet and the key here uh these are um jack torrance is from the shining uh little teaser there so uh, looks like they're continuing on with the horror line. It just sucks that these are so back to back to back with each other that, you know, kind of like I said, we're not really seeing the final products. They're they're showing us a bunch of stuff, but, um, you know, I think it'll be uh, by this chart here, the end of this year or Q1 of next year before we have to start to see these rolling in. So yeah, uh, should be interesting to see, but I, I don't want to say I'm cautiously optimistic, but this is a pretty fucking good prototype. So uh let's uh let's cautiously the only thing is I, a good way of saying it Zach. yeah the only other small thing i will say is like with sideshow it seems like hot toys is more consistently just good while right. sideshow consistently seems to disappoint like from the clone wars line yeah. like lately like they just haven't seemed to deliver lately um i will say though like some of the other ones i don't know anyone personally that had like the dude figure like that one looked pretty cool recently that they released yeah. um some of the um clint eastwood stuff i think yeah. those get good reviews but so but uh yeah i think the pain points just kind of stick out more with sideshow lately good point um shots have never had an issue with sideshow customer service the issue is the subpar final product cs shouldn't have to always field complaints just make a quality product is my point ninja scroll great point don't yeah. forget the grievous yeah oh yeah the grief jesus the grievous yeah <laughs> how can i forget dude good shit ninja squirrel there you go yeah um balin by hot toys balin skull uh this one is 285 which i think makes the super commando at uh, i believe it was 260 look like a ridiculous price uh excellent likeness to ray stevenson i think the beard sculpting is fantastic i think the head portrait is i literally i i don't really see a single flaw in this figure uh by my by my account uh eddie friend and myself did a little bit of a short stream on this so i will leave my thoughts at that and i want to hear what you guys have to say yeah this figure looks fucking great this figure looks really good um the material choice looks great uh looks sturdy um maybe you might have to worry about some flaking you know way down the road but i, I don't know i guess i'll have to wait to you know see it in hand to see what kind of it doesn't look like a pleather it looks more almost like a suede does that make sense so i don't think that would peel or anything meticulous material selection dean that's what they say so mm. let's hope they're they're correct the the cloak looks heavy looks thick sometimes you get a uh a figure cape and it's like almost fucking see-through and you're like i guess um the the armor plate looks great the stitching looks good like it looks like a substantial figure like this figure is gonna weigh a ton uh just from all the materials they've used um i love it i really do man look at the yes. back dude all that belt work back there that's so cool. pretty dope Sorry, no, 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 no. That's a, that's a great point. And I, I was going to say, I think it looks so much better without the cloak on the cloak just kind of, you know, hides the beautiful detailing and the armor 
and kind of the the body i'm not quite sure what type of body they're using but it looks really beefed up so i would say they're, they're capturing the badass nature of the of the actor and of the character um i i still scr struggle with the sculpt on this one and shin hati which we'll talk about in a second i think that they're good well i think this one is closer to good but i think that he suffers from a similar problem as the obi-wan from his uh tv series where the beard mustache area just looks soft like it just looks a bit like uh i don't know there's just not enough detail there and so i think that that's what's throwing me off but in the eyes i see all the detailing like i think that you know that the sculpt is really really close to being some of their strongest work but that area and then maybe the shading in the hair just kind of hold it back a little bit so this is definitely one that i was you know kind of on i'm always on the fence i guess but on the fence on whether do i really need this character because he didn't necessarily come out as strong as i was hoping but we'll talk about it on the get it or not segment what 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 do you think they could have done to give more detail to the beard probably just a little more mix of black in in the in the beard specifically so just like just a coloring a mix yeah i i don't know i so think so, something sculpt, like that to, the, yeah, wow. the, yeah i would yeah, i would agree the with the paint Marco. application i think the sculpting is very fine but just just a little even like just a dark gray wash just to bring out the uh sort of the low points and the high points i think would be really good i'd have to see the color of his beard if you make it too dark, then literally it's literally what I'm accurate. looking for. <laughs> um, because to an extent, I agree it's not detailed enough, but I also don't think they could have done anything differently. If they put too much in it, then it's not screen accurate because his beard was pretty white. It movie. is very white, except for around so, the mustache, it's a little yeah. brown. Which they did that on the figure. So I just like it feels a little bit like the Han head sculpt with the hair. It's like. I hear the complaints, but at the same time, what could they have possibly done to make it better? And, like, one thing that jumps to my mind is maybe thicker strands, like, more fine detail in the strands, but then that might make it look more toyish if it's too too thick of strands in the hair. So, I don't know. It To me, it feels like they did the best that they could with what they're working with, but... Anyway, uh, I think the likeness is amazing. I think the figure looks amazing. I think it's cool that people really were clamoring for this figure and Shin, and they got them both at the same time, which is insane. Um, I do think that the lightsaber should be more orange. Um, they look, they looked to me more orange in the show, but they're here. They're almost red, you know. And I, when it lights up, it's gonna be red anyway, because that light up sucks. So, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, Eddie, this might good. be, you know, a year and a half away from releasing. They've got time to update their technology to make it better. Are they going to do it? Probably not, but they got some time. I'm getting annoyed with how much in the, like, in this accessory page, how much they put, like, the suit as part of what you get with it. Yeah. <laughs> they need to stop putting, they do like, that details in the suit. <laughs> They put like the shoes on the there. Boots, like, oh, that's just man. the shoes. Yeah, bro. the boots. Didn't he, didn't he handle the compass as well? Right, like that was one of the, the big yeah. areas that they sent him yeah. after. So just give us a compass holding hand and give us that accessory as a pronounced. Yeah. It's not that hard to do. Yeah, completely agree. Um, I uh, do think that there are some really cool things on this outfit. Um, Eddie, you mentioned it on the uh, short recording, but. You know, just small details like the crystal in the belt, the yeah. ring on the hand, um, just cool stuff that, you know, is, is in the show. But, you know, these characters are, you know, either moving quickly or their hands are at their sides. So you don't really notice them. Uh, to Dean's point, definitely agree. The um, thickness of this cloak, I think, looks fantastic. Um, yeah, this is going to be a cool figure. I hope Hot Toys um, doesn't have that common issue that they have where the dyes transfer from the cloak to the figure i think in 2024 i think we got to leave that behind so hopefully they have some quality control that they uh are putting towards that because uh, i see it probably about once once a month that collector has a figure that you know they've had for a year in an air-conditioned cabinet and they have just huge splotches of uh essentially ink transfer so uh or dye transfer rather uh, but this one is looking pretty good and we also have 
the comparison photos there, um, which I think that they've nailed this um, with, really well. Um, go ahead, Batfish. Uh, just with the beards, I feel like all of their beards look a little off. It, it, I think they look too much like uh, a person's head hair rather than coarse beard hair. Like it, there's something. It looks like it's wavy hair on his face yeah, rather than coarse beard hair. There's that's a really they, good maybe catch, they should be fish. more curly or something. I don't know what it is. They're just too, too wavy looking. Maybe that's that. That's why their beards always kind of look funny. I don't think it's just this figure. To, but overall, yeah, definitely a banger. The tailoring and whatnot looks like dead on. Really, uh, well fitting to this like broader shouldered figure they've got going on and. Uh, at least it looks broader and yeah old older character or older uh aged characters they they always nail so this and is just uh, a... hard not to buy though yeah this line is just better and better <laughs> heck yeah hard not to dive in right and and i think that's just a testament to how strong hot toys has been especially in the sculpt department as of late i mean you know throughout their history but as of late because we're nitpicking very you know small things that are not going to be make or breaks for a lot of folks but i think we, it's still you know um, it's still worth the conversation to talk about areas that the figures can improve. There you go. Uh, when there is one, there's often two, and we have the Padawan okay, here, Shin, Hati. What? I'm getting them um, both. That's it. There we go. 280. Locked it in. Uh, Jan, January to June 2025. Uh, again, I've already spoken on these, but Dean, what do you think about Mommy Shin? Uh, definitely a Hati for sure. Uh, I like it. I don't really know what else they could have improved upon. Um, I think the likeness is great. The the hair is cool. Um, it's even got the little the Padawan tail there, little rat tail. Her armor looks cool. That like really cool gunmetal. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it's got me really thinking about spending the 700 bucks. I'll tell you that much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I don't have a lot of negative things to say about either one. Uh, in fact, I don't know if I have anything negative to say. I like them pretty much flat out. Yeah. So, so to Dean's point, like both figures, you can almost talk about them in, in the same way where the costuming is fantastic. The lack of the, you know, the lightsaber photoshopping, obviously those, it's going to be a letdown when you finally get the figure. Um, but the sculpt on this one is actually weaker to me. I don't think it looks much like the actress at all, but I don't know that that's stopping it from being just a really, really cool figure. Gigi did mention like she thought that this figure looked like her and I can't unsee it because I don't think the actress looks like her, but I think that this figure kind of does look like her. The same, same little uh, short hair, haircut as well. Um, so I do think if you get one, you've got to get both. And again, we'll, we'll talk about it on get it or not, but it's, um, just one that I had to think long and hard about because they're really, really interesting, cool designs, interesting characters, didn't love the show. Um, but the sculpts are just short of really in the S tier of what hot toys does, but does that matter at the end of the day? If you want this representation, we'll find out. I actually thought that the likeness was better on this one than Balin when me and really? Zach did okay. the first look. So, um, and I like the hair a lot. I like the pearlescent kind of paint that it has, at least in the pictures. Um, yeah, and everything about Balin, like her suit looks amazing. The armor looks sick. Uh, I I think that the expression works really well for this character. Um, and I think the the movable eyes adds a lot. In any of the pictures, does she have more of a bend in her elbows than this? I do not believe so. Well, that one up top where she's grabbing her hood looks like it goes a little past yeah. 90. So hopefully she has double double elbows. That would be my only critique. But, yeah, I think it's uh, this one. This one almost feels like a 10 out of 10. I think Balin's a... 10 out of 10 too, but I can see the argument there on the likeness a little more. This one. I wow. Think so both like, tens in your yeah. opinion. Yeah. I think they're really, really good. Wow. Okay. And, and so I know you've come around on Ahsoka as a show, but you still, you still have a connection to these characters specifically. You still like liked their portrayal in the show. 
I thought they were interesting characters. I feel that we didn't get enough from them. I feel yeah, like they were, they were really teasing. Out, yeah, they were teasing something with them, and I don't, I don't know that they, they did enough to make me want more in a season two. A, kind of a letdown for me. Uh, I thought that they started off really cool and and intriguing, but I don't feel that they gave me any more for that. And it, it kind of started off hot and then kind of went lukewarm, in my opinion. So. The characters are so popular; they could almost do a spinoff of because obviously, well, shoot, yeah, they have can't, to cast, though. right? But <laughs> yeah, but but almost like it almost warrants a spinoff of just like continuing where that story left, acknowledging that they'd have to recast. But yeah, they're so interesting. There's so much meat on the bone, as John would say, um, left with these characters. So okay, in- interesting to hear your thoughts. Yeah, That's, I can agree uh, probably with Eddie. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, chat's not necessarily agree agreeing with the shrink ray. I think it's pretty good, uh, and I believe we have the photo comparisons that Ben sent uh, after this. Sorry, Batfish. That's okay. I, I was just going to say, I think I agree with Eddie. I almost like this one more than Balin. Like, they're both very good, but I do think this is maybe closer. But, I don't know, yeah, these characters are so cool. And uh, the armor, like, just like that knight armor on her shoulders, uh, reminding me of that sort of thing. But I think part of the reason these characters really hit with people recently is since the sequel trilogies we haven't had many new characters appear all the disney plus shows we've had like obi-wan kenobi book of boba fett mandalorian he was new obviously i was gonna say since mando this was my point we haven't really had any cool kind of new characters in star wars that um have hit like andor had a few but they a lot of them kind of were only in a couple of episodes i just feel like these characters are kind of the coolest new star wars characters we've seen in a while so that's why they may be hit but yeah this this line i want to get a lot of the stuff these ones if i did get like ahsoka if i sorry if i got like sabine chopper and Hera and all that stuff i would still be questioning ahsoka but this these would be possibly something to grab still i'd be thinking about them the chat let's see here dj says uh hot take i don't see uh the hype of shin other than her being good looking she didn't do much and isn't as memorable as balin uh Saifel says shin looks uh, great both far and up close i feel that balin looks too soft from afar but fine from up close weird but i can't wait for both uh and fern says i think they're both amazing and right on the sweet spot price wise i was expecting them to be in the 300 dollars plus range so it was a pleasant surprise seeing them under three hundred dollars um and <laughs> premium rock base zero interest in the whole line rebel should have stayed a cartoon there we go sam uh both That's 10 out fair. of 10s trying to back out of collecting a bit but had to pre-order these the first day they are too good uh and ninja says 3k and counting though expensive asf line and for not an amazing show uh let's see here we have the comparison photos which uh i do like i do like them i'm glad i'm really glad that hot toys didn't go with the um that really shitty barbie type wig oh that, yeah um, yeah yeah I, i'm so glad that they didn't uh christian i do uh, it's tough whether they're gonna sell out fast or stay on sideshow for a while I think lately they're trending to not being readily available. Once the blogger photos go up, I think most things are typically on wait list or that sort of low stock where you only have a few minutes with them in in the cart before they gray out. So I would say be if if you're willing, willing to risk it rather, um, I would definitely, be very vigilant on as soon as those blogger photos come out make a quick decision and then pre-order or don't because uh it seems like they're they're really not lasting that long lately um which i think is just how things are trending to be so um and now that site shows running the whole like get it or don't uh or pay ebay prices ads I, th- I think they're probably pretty serious now about you having to pre-order. So, um, and I will just say that you know, sideshow isn't the only game in town. You always got backups. You know, I is still true. am saved by pop culture. Plenty of figures you that one are of these, you know. Marco. Listen, I gave. 
Hell yeah. That's that's, that's our new point for today. When you get a point, you get a Lisa al Gaib. Incredible. Um, so so yeah, so I think that there are ways that you can find these figures that you know are sold out on sideshow. So it's not your only avenue. But you you know, you could you can get some good discounts if you act early and are willing to uh, shop at a mom and pop as well. Yeah, there there's quite a few. Obviously we have the ones that we mentioned. Uh, but you would be surprised by just Googling your um, city and hot toys, how many retailers are in most areas. So, um, you know, you might have to go with uh, slightly. Some of these mom and pops do have more expensive prices, but, you know, it does beat paying eBay prices sometimes. So uh, there's that. There's also BST, right? If, you, if you're willing to accept a used figure um, more often than not, I think Crosshair might be the most recent hot toys that I've seen be quite difficult to get used i think he goes for like 430 450 and up uh but yeah they're usually available uh second hand uh and you know eventually the prices do go down arena suit boba fett that was one that was like 600 bucks for a while it's like 350 now so um there's that uh sam says don't do what marco says hunting things down does not always work out premium prices happen a lot i think it's not super common but it does happen but uh i will say you know i've I've yet to get burned so um yeah one of these days they'll make me pay for it but so far i've been able to get everything that i look for even way after it's sold out on sideshow there we go uh so an art paul was uh put up for order and i wanted to show this uh pricing comparison before we talk about the figure we always lead with the price But the price on this is kind of complex and it took, um, excuse me, it took a little bit of of kind of research and development to uh, get this done. So first and foremost, there are two versions of Paul that uh, basically any retailer can get. So there's the standard version, which is with sculpted hair, and there's the deluxe version with the um, rooted hair. In our direct if you're buying it directly from inart or the queen studios dot shop uh you're able to get an exclusive version of the character that has the same exact items in the box the only exception being you get a bonus desert mouse accessory now every third party quote-unquote retailer that i've seen none of them have been able to offer the mouse as well so there may be some out there that um eventually get it but as far as what i've seen as of i think yesterday no one was able to also add the mouse and i think some people even advertised at first that they were going to get the mouse and then they didn't so uh they ended up having to take that down so keep that in mind um now for big bad toy store uh these prices um when applicable are with tax and shipping and i will point out when tax is not included so these are the out the door prices so Big Bad Toy Store with tax and four dollar shipping is four ninety three uh, for the regular, six ninety five for the deluxe. Comic Concepts, which I believe most states they don't charge tax to, but there are a handful that they do. So this is the price with the retail price and shipping is four thirteen and five twenty two. Uh, Collector Zone, which does include tax and shipping, and so it's an out the door price. Uh, without a code is 431 or 553. They did have a special code. We were asked not to share it, but if you look around, it's pretty easy to find. Uh, they were able to get it down to as low as 345 and 442. That is not with the CW code. And I think our price was uh, a bit higher than that. But that does require full payment to get that discount. Um, OSK with the code uh you know there's like the cw codes or like the will foxification codes i think it knocks off ten dollars so it's 411 and 521 the in art direct exclusive um which does not include shipping and from what i've heard is um uh does not require tax or should not require tax is 360 and 475 but if you have a code uh we tried to get one we haven't been able to get one yet but uh there are some people out there that have uh, influencer codes you can get it as low as 342 and 451 and initially a lot of people thought myself included that you had to full pay to get that five percent discount 
but uh, they have said on different posts that the 5% will apply to the deposit and it will also apply to the final payment. So, um, and that is at this moment, the best price though. I would say um, this is again, without shipping and handling and they estimate that the shipping should be between 10 and 20, but they do put the disclaimer that the final cost may vary. And when some people took the package measurements and put it into like a, where you can estimate prices, they were about $40. So I don't know if NRT going to eat, eat some of that cost um, because I don't think prices are going to get cheaper. But when people estimated it, the pricing, where were they doing it from? Um, so when you're a retailer, you typically have like discounts with um, different shipping people. So if I do shipping, it's more expensive than if a business does it since I don't have ship in uh, quantity. But uh, that was with the given dimensions and given weight. No, but from where? Shipping from I don't where? know what the... Uh, probably USPS. No, but um, from where in the US? From that retailer from to China. a specific... Yeah. The, because it's shipping from their US warehouse to the places, not Correct. from China. So I'm saying, how did they know where in the US it would be shipping from? They were well, probably probably estimating the shipping from West their Coast. ship. I'm just saying, the quotes that I'm saying... NR is telling us it's 10 to 20, but they're also telling us it is subject to change. Yeah. The quote that the the retailers that I've spoken with said from their location, like if they were to ship, let's say, from Florida to my house, the exact same package would be about $40. Oh, okay. So you're saying... Yeah, so they're not estimating like... They were estimating yeah. from NR. No, 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 no. No, because NR is shipping it. It seems like they're shipping a quantity to some location in the United States, and then they're shipping it from the U.S. to yeah. the U.S. Now... It also should be noted that for Europe in the EU, the uh, it is going from China to the EU, and that's estimated to be fifty to a hundred dollars. And duty and taxes are not included. So um, a lot of times uh, when you order that kind of stuff, you'll get like a separate bill. I think it can be like up to five percent additional. Um, Bathish, you might have a more accurate number on that, but I think what I've heard is five percent. And for Australia, um, I believe. Australia, New Zealand, it's free shipping. So um, just keep those numbers in mind. I did try to make it, I don't know if this is uh, <laughs> if this is sarcasm, but I did try to make it as clear as possible. Um, and and there, this obviously isn't the only places you can buy it from. I think I had about five or six people message me different retailers and their prices. And not for lack of wanting to give all that information, but those prices weren't better than what I had here. And I didn't want to make the graphic too convoluted with too much information. Uh, but we do have some pictures of Paul. And uh, I'll just cycle through these while you guys give your thoughts. I know I've been talking for a while. but uh, Zach, yeah. can I just say thanks for doing that price comparison? Because, you know, all the yeah, information no was flying around. It was actually really useful. You know, that type of stuff speaks to me. So I appreciate you doing that for the community. No problem, buddy. And what we're looking at here is the uh, deluxe version. So this is the version with the rooted hair. Uh, yeah, this figure looks fucking fantastic. Um, I, I like the movie Dune. I like the character Paul. I really don't like the, uh, what, what's that suit called? The still suit? The still suit. I just don't like the design. I really? I, oh, I man. I don't like it. Um, that being said, this is still pretty tempting. Um, I don't need a rooted fair character uh, hair. I've already I've said that a bunch, so I'm not really worried about spending the three whatever on it. But um, I like it a lot. Uh, if I if push comes to shove, and I really need a Paul in my collection, because right now I haven't seen the second movie, so I'm not super hyped about it. I might just go Og Toys. Now, they're not much cheaper, to be honest. But they have Paul in his, like, military garb, which I fucking love. So I might go that route. And I know wow. it's not... You can't compare Og Toys to NR. I get it. It's a pretty tough take, bro. It's a pretty tough take. But, but again, like, I'm not in love with Dune. I'm not gonna... I don't need the best version of the character. Yeah. If I did, or if I end up 
needing it, right? I haven't seen the second movie, so if I watch it and I'm like, fuck, okay, I get it. You know, that's a different story. But as of right now, I don't I don't need those, so that is kind of like saying, you know, I wanted an interbay figure, but I'm just gonna go get those starting lineups instead, because no, I'm kidding. The Octoids ones are actually pretty strong. I, and I think even the uh, the Leto Atreides, I'm looking at that one. That one could come out pretty dope. So, um, yeah, I think Inart was really smart with this. So Hot Toys rarely gets this right, but Inart struck right when the iron was hot because we've seen this prototype. It was kicked around. Not that much hype, honestly. I think Dune Part 1 really wasn't received like incredibly you know, in terms of the collecting community, I don't really recall folks being that hyped over it, uh, probably because of the pandemic and it going straight to HBO Max and it was a bit more forgettable. Um, but with all the hype of the the part two film, they kind you know, this is a part one figure, but they've kind of included at least one accessory that's from the second film. So, you know, they're they're kind of, uh, you know, capitalizing on the, the strength of both films together, um, which I think is just really, really smart. Um, I love all the accessories. I don't love them, you know, uh, putting the mouse behind a paywall on their side only. I think that, you know, if you, if you now you have this license to distribute worldwide and then you're almost discouraging folks from, you know, ordering from other places, it feels like you'd want to grow your market as big as possible. So really interesting move on my part, but obviously if you're buying directly from them, they're getting a bigger cut of the profit. So in that regard, it makes sense, but it feels a bit short-sighted. I just think the artistry on this figure is amazing. I, I think when I saw the still suits in the first film, I was like, this would make such a dope figure. Like, I love the design of that. I think specifically I saw it on um, Duncan Idaho, who's Jason Momoa. And I think that that might be a candidate for a figure that they could pair with this one if they, you know, in fact did a line of, of these figures. Because, you know, it would be a bigger body. They get, they'd have a chance to, like, make a really cool bespoke body. Uh, Momoa you could do the rooting with as well. So... Um, yeah, I just really am hyped on everything about this minus the price. But I think, you know, there are ways if you're thinking ahead to really shave that price down significantly um, so that it's a little bit more manageable than, you know, some of, some of the other areas where it can get pretty bloated. Um, yeah, just really awesome. Even though I'm not a huge Timothy Chalamet fan, even though Paul's kind of, uh, you know, not really the hero, um, it's still a pretty cool figure. I'm going to disagree sorry i'm gonna disagree just a little bit with the mouse thing i i do think it's cheeky 100 percent. i i don't think it's like the greatest thing that in has done but i know their contemporaries hot toys have oftentimes hid really critical accessories behind paywalls um mm -hmm. in this case like the the batman right like the the uh sticky bomb gun it was an 80 dollar yeah. upcharge or you have an empty holster I think the mouse is cool. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, it is sort of his namesake uh, in the books, at least. I don't know if it will be as well in the film. But um, it, it we've seen retailer exclusives for all, all kinds of six-scale stuff, right, um, that I think were much cooler. Um, you know, various Hot Toys exclusives or even, like, with the Interbase stuff, like the the network exclusive stuff. So it's cool. I get it. And it's also like not, I like the way they did this because the regular and the deluxe, they're the exact figure minus the portraits being rooted. I think in their Batman figure, I think that was one of my complaints is that there was some ex uh, accessories, I believe, that were kept behind certain versions. I think it was like the little, um, I think it was a laptop or something or some type of computer that was included with one that wasn't in the base set. Um, this one, I really appreciate that. The only difference is the um, the rooted, and that the retail cost didn't increase for the addition of the mouse. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I guess I see what you're saying. You, you could get it in both versions, and I don't like it when Hot Toys does it either. Honestly, I just uh, I just hate the exclusion of that's true. accessories. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's part of collecting, I guess. So so I can complain about it all I want. You're gonna have to explain it, to me backstage how Paul isn't the hero. Yeah, I will. I will. But I, I don't want to say any spoilers. I would Can I just say one last thing? Yeah. <laughs> I like the, the base that they've given us that is it Irakan? Is that the name of the, the um whatever the city that, that they go into? Anyways, but I they should have given us a sand base as well. Like the to I not feel like give us a, a lot sand of base. <laughs> well, this isn't Dune 2, so never mind. 
No, yeah, but I was even, gonna say there's a lot of stuff one. they could have given you if it was <laughs> Dune two, but so this ahead. is this is Dune one. Let me ask you this. I, now it's been a little bit since I've seen Dune one, but I don't recognize um, these accessories, and I also don't recognize like the lightsaber accessory. I think one of okay, so the one on his arm I think is the compass with the wristband. Oh, okay, band. okay, yep. And I think the other thing is the shield. No, that vibrating shield that goes around him. Uh, could, it could oh be. yeah, I, I have to go back and watch are. it. And then yeah, those, these are the thumpers. These that's are the, the thumper. The other one is the telescope. See, this is I think the GPS or like okay. a compass. This is the shield. I think. Yeah. I think it's the other way around, Eddie. I well, think, okay, that could be. Yeah, that could that's, be the that's compass, the compass, and the other, and the other the one's the shield, the shield which I, yeah. which I hadn't thought about. But yeah, they, they totally oh, tapped that. Oh, it's the uh, yeah, the vibrating, okay. the yeah, yeah, shield thing. You might, you know, what, Eddie, I'm gonna give you one of these. Listen, I gave. Listen, okay. dude, that's one of my favorite characters. That guy. so good. <laughs> um, I now now um, to interrupt just a minute. There are a lot. Actually, what is this here? This little gun is this literally just a gun? He I don't remember that, that in the first movie either. Someone explained that on Shane's channel. He he used it in the end of the first movie. He let him borrow it, and he's like, "I'm gonna uh, need that back." But I forgot when that happened. I gotta rewatch. It's been a while. But there are a lot of people that are saying. And again, I haven't seen the second film, um, but, so this is with information from people that have, but that this outfit with some small changes and maybe an extra portrait with the blue eye effect could represent a large portion of the second film. And from Inart's, what they've said is, you know, kind of the traditional will take it into consideration, but I think that enough people have said this that they are going to take a good look at this and, and see if they can address it with a different shawl, with a different portrait. And uh, I, I believe even what's been floated around by some uh, members have been like maybe a small upgrade pack where you know you might just need to buy a portrait and a, and a small accessory to get that Dune 2 look. Um, I think it is very interesting territory that we'd be trending towards uh, if that is the case. It's, it's very similar. Yeah. It's not far off. Uh, it would need a lot of sand weathering though <laughs> that's one of my biggest complaints like he's, he's very, very clean yeah. um, you know you know they're gonna release this figure and then like six months later they're gonna be like oh also we're gonna send you a dune 2 head but only some people are gonna get it oh bro imagine they're gonna be like here's this mouse but only some people are gonna get it <laughs> mm -hmm. um and this uh sand base that may or may not be made by us but i has don't tape. after watching the second movie i don't think the mouse is necessary i get why it's cool but yeah, I don't think you need the mouse. But it's is it also a fifty dollar mouse? Movie, so it'd be yeah. cool to have it on the base, but do, I don't think it's necessary at all. Yeah. You, would you rather save fifty bucks and go somewhere yes. else? Then yes. yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but the th is it is it a savings though? Because like if you look at this here, yeah, the, yeah. it is cheaper. Right with with the code, especially since you don't have to full pay. Before it was like okay, shit. If you're having to put up four fifty bucks that day to get the discount but they've said like hey you can just do the deposit and then with the influencer code i don't know who all has one i like will will has one so if, if you're like jonesing to order i don't know what the code is but he has a code we've asked for a code if we get one and you want to wait that'd be cool too i don't really think we need any kickbacks but um that that i i think it's the best option the code that this price for collector zone is Marcos told me it, it it ends a week, and that was on, I think that was on, th when did this drop, Thursday or Friday? So that price that Marcos has isn't lasting forever, and our price, I think, was about 15 or $20 more on both of these numbers. So, I mean, the NR1 is the cheapest if their shipping is that actual $10 to $20. I don't, I, I don't get what you mean by cheapest. You mean after that code expires, the collector's own code expires? Well, the three forty five and three forty two. I guess you're with the ten dollars shipping. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah but the, the collection let's just code it's does twenty, ex right? You're saying you're saying yeah, ten, but let's and it could see. even be more potentially. Yeah, it could be more. So so four seventy to me. Yeah, yeah so four seventy to me. Yeah, it depends. Now what your, you'd what have your to have it secured because I think our code, like I said, the code that doesn't expire for us for collector zone, it's it's more expensive. And I think it puts it more in line with that ten to twenty, where I think theirs is even just slightly better. Got um, it. in fact, let me, cause I know a bunch of people, when I first put this post up, I didn't know about that code. 
and I had like 10 people tell me that I was incorrect, but the number was, I'll, I'll find it. Cause yeah, a lot of people were telling me I was incorrect. My estimation was 366 and 470 out the door with our, with the CW code. Okay. Okay. And I know Eddie's right in the middle of his comments, but I just want to say one other thing that yeah, my um, Shane mentioned, but I had the same thought was that, uh, you know, with the handcuffs that were supposed to be exclusive to the Joker for the three day window, everybody ended up getting the handcuffs. I don't think that's, I don't think the same thing is going to happen with the mouse, but I wouldn't be shocked if at the end of the day, just every package came it with the mouse. It seems like it's logistically not worth it to exclude that. Like exclude the hassle yeah. is going to be to make sure like, <laughs> These you are get the one package boxes. that doesn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, the code is uh, W-I-L-L. So, you know, I love Will. If he gets a kickback, I, it really doesn't bother me. But Inart has said unofficially, like in replies to comments, that the 5% will apply to the final payment or payments. So um, I don't think you have to stress too much about that. Um, it is a cool accessory. Um, I looked into 3D printing some. I don't know if it's going to be possible for Zack's Wonderland. Um nor do I think um, it's really going to be financially viable because if I'm printing and shipping these little fragile things and having to paint them and deal with them breaking while I'm painting them, it's not going to be cheap. So, um, But I, I, I will give it the old college go, even if it's just one for Marco then uh, to say I did it. But uh, Hell yeah. I will say what's crazy though is the uh, the cost for, which I guess shipping from um, to the EU from China, I, I imagine that is expensive for... I think it's like a six or seven pound box, but fifty to hundred bucks, bro, on top of duties and taxes. Then one six kid is a hundred percent your best bet over there. Yeah, exactly. If you're overseas, and that was one thing that some people were really upset about was that uh, it, it almost was not even remotely financially viable to order from Inar, and people were demanding the mouse. So I don't yeah. know what's going to happen with that. <laughs> I saw some posts, it, man. Look like I wrote it. People are people are very passionate about that mouse, Eddie. You were you were saying stuff though, and we totally hijacked I'll, your your points. I'll save it for the get it or not, because um, that's what the rest of my comments were going to be. And then I thought oh, I could just save it for that. So I think it's sick. I don't think I would wait. The people saying like, "Oh, I want Dune too." Like, it may be a while. He, yes, that's like he's arguably cooler in Dune too, but. The outfit isn't that much different. Um, I wouldn't like uh, not enjoy this figure just for the possibility that it, there's a Dune 2 version coming. Just get this one. Enjoy it. I think it's amazing. So, yeah. I really want to see this in theaters before it goes away because being able to find the time because of a uh, one-and-a-half-year-old right now, but... Um... And Hell Divers. Yeah. Hell Divers, yeah. But also our theater in town is kind of crappy, and it's only playing for seven days, and it ends this Thursday. So I'd have to go drive 40 minutes to go and see it. Oof. Bro, why are you uh, on here right now? Go see this movie immediately. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, yeah, with all the hype, I do, I do really want to see it. And uh, ideally an IMAX if I can. It's not the full 70 millimeter here, but it's there's there are bigger screens. So, yeah. Looking, looking forward to uh, checking it out, but I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't tempt me to get this because I don't think I, I think I'd kind of agree with Dean. I'd like go Og Toys, maybe if, if it came down to it, um, they aren't, aren't necessarily cheaper, but in art directly is pretty decent price. I'm trying to find the Canadians pricing, but it doesn't really give me much. Uh, in regards to shipping estimates and whatnot, it doesn't give like an EU estimate like they did. Um, but yeah, beyond that, looking good so far. Uh, it would be tough, honestly, though, to pick between the rooted because the rooted does look really great. Yeah. Badfish, I think it's totally, I think I've been converted to a rooted fan at this point where it's like, if it's just a negligible amount more, it's totally worth it just to go for rooted. I think so too. It just, I, Inart has proven they, seem they know what they're doing when it comes to it it seems so yeah i think their rooting is fantastic i think you have to have a rooted well i don't want to sound like a gatekeeper but i've had rooted figures that look great and then you know over time as you have to futz them it starts to get a little thin up top you know it's time to bring it on home so i um i think it really depends 
Um, fortunately, I think the styling gel they use doesn't require a lot of futzing. They're usually pretty well futzed out of the box, but um, I think for me, for longevity's sake, I, I feel like, one, I think it is a very iconic look with the full still suit on. So, you, you know, you don't really see the, the rooted hair in that look. But if you did want to go with the non-closed up look, I still think their sculpting is really solid. Like I, I said it with the Joker, but th the way that they do the hair is very fine. And I, I, I think it looks pretty good. Um, if I'm buying this figure, I think personally I'm going with the, um, with the sculpted. Um, I think, I think it's the, um, better for me personally, but, um, I, I won't deny it. I think that Gandalf, the rooting is, is I think on another level. It's what I imagine like the, the quality of rooting would be from like, you know, the people that charge three, four hundred dollars of sculpt to root. I, I think it's like what I imagine that quality would be. I've never seen one of those rootings uh, in person, but from the photos, like it, it, it feels to me like it would be at that level. Um, yeah. Uh, this one does have a shitload of hands too. the Paul. Let me pull up those hands. There's, two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen seventeen hands which i think is fantastic um really love to see that and uh yeah i think this figure is just jam-packed and, and hopefully they've taken some of the things that they've learned from the other figures things that they did right things that they did wrong and they can apply it to this figure because i think it looks really cool honestly the fact that you can open up the backpack so the, the details it's, are it's, incredible it's, it's, it's incredible yeah and I can't um, stress enough how smart they were with the timing. Like, just they dropped yeah, it at the really perfect good. time. And maybe that means that, you know, folks bail a year and a half from now or two years when the, the final bill comes due. But, man, they're getting a lot of upfront cash right now. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Moving on, we have an update from Iconic Studios. Uh, <laughs> Equan says, first figure without paper accessories. Um Let's see here. There's a lot of information here, but uh, Muhammad Ali and Silent Hill. The first batch of direct orders was sent just before Chinese New Year. The second batch is due to be dispatched in the next few days. Uh, the stock for retail is on the move, and hopefully it won't be too long now until those are being delivered. Uh, Street Fighter V Ken is in production, estimated Q2. Akuma pre-orders are closed and final numbers confirmed. Akuma will begin production after Ken. Uh, Chun-Li, uh, they're working on the body proportions and making sure they are captured accurately. Uh, when they can show more, they will. Uh, the Highlander is progressing well, and we've been busy working on the sculpts, getting them approved, uh, and also creating the overall figure design. The Elvis Presley, they're working with the team to get an ETA on our Elvis figures at the moment. And future figures, they do have them, but they can't talk about them yet. Um, just one small thing going back to Paul. I don't believe I saw any sort of windows on Paul, so I don't know when those pre-orders close. Uh, in the past, it had you know been three days for the Joker, several weeks for the Gandalf, and Pennywise, and I don't really see any sort of information regarding edition size or when that's closing, so uh, I wouldn't wait forever to make that decision. But going back to Iconic, uh, definitely a good-looking list of updates. I appreciate going figure by figure and uh, kind of telling us where everything's at. So... Uh, nothing really to complain about there. I know, Marco, I think you got your uh, Muhammad Ali already, so you were in the first batch. Um, yeah. You ordered it with your own funds. It's not like you were sent a uh, YouTuber batch or anything like that. But I wish, uh, hey, looks... if you want to send me those, but no, my own <laughs> funds directly from them. There you go. Yeah, this is, this is a good update. I, I like this kind of communication from them. Yeah, it's great. Um, I, I, it really is a simple as putting out a, a little post like this like hey guys we're still working on your shit here's some updates you know there's nothing very specific here as collectors i don't think we're looking for anything very specific i guess maybe like if if you're like worried about making the payment like fuck when do i need to come up with this money or whatever but when you've pre-ordered something and you know it's a long way off it's like hey it's still it's still coming along you know sometimes i've i've had figures just drop out of the fucking blue and i was like i didn't even know this was coming like it, it was delayed into oblivion and then all of a sudden it's here so yeah just a nice quick little post hey guys we're still working on this shit and it's coming so 
I'd love to see it. Yeah, I, I love it as well, especially with a company that's really trying to get their footing in the one six game, and they've got you know really nice licenses and starting to uh, start down some really cool lines. It's great to just let us know where you're at, especially because these things can get delayed and um, you know, they go away for a little bit and we just don't hear about Iconic for too long. So keep communicating, keep teasing us on what's coming up in the future. And uh, yeah, well, excited to see more from them and uh, just uh, perfect, perfect communication here. I didn't know they were doing Elvis Presley. That could be my first Iconic Studios figure. Dude, it's oh, no. pretty fucking cool because it's that grayscale. <laughs> I like it a lot. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull up the photos so I can show you. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I love uh, musicians and singers, and so that's a cool one that I don't think Elvis has been done even maybe in third party. I don't know. I don't recall any Elvis, so that's cool. So they're doing the Jailhouse Rock version, yeah, which is the uh, gray one, and then they're also doing a i was hoping this would have it but they're doing nope oh enervated one wow let's see they're also i thought this was in art yeah the iconic studios elvis presley vegas edition which vegas? is uh vegas yeah vegas oh my god <laughs> is my mouse not want to work today frilly suit um, with the wings and everything yeah exactly so it's the uh, this one is Damn. like the i think it's a little older in this one but uh yeah, dude, they're pretty fucking sick, honestly. I love the gray one. The gray one is, is the one for me. But uh That's yeah. a hard that's a tough choice. I might have to get both, honestly. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love Elvis, man. <laughs> He's the king, dude. The, king. the cool thing is is this isn't just this is not uh uncommon in any industry where they just don't tell you what they're doing. From video games to movies and stuff now movies are a little more open where they'll like tell you where they are in production and things like that now and some of that is also people figuring it out but you just don't get a lot of this communication from companies telling you what they're progressing on and whatnot because a lot of them are afraid to um to to just be that open but yeah it's it's great to to see a company uh letting the customers know how things are going Uh, let's see here. Moving on, we have a small update from Mars Toys. Uh, it says, I spent a long time testing the glasses and finally found the best production methods for me. This is a major blow to customization and other perfunctory third parties. I don't quite understand that uh, at any rate. Uh, the Matt 010 will never not will not be re-released never whatever that means uh if you don't want to spend the high price on ebay after the release please pre-order now and i they they got metal glasses and they look great don't get me wrong but i'm not really sure what a lot of that first paragraph means but uh you know mars toys is doing it big they're doing it big i think they meant to put i think it's supposed to i think that mat zero 10 is supposed to be it's not released it's not going to be re released re released yeah it's like, not going to be will not be re released yeah yeah for sure weird. for yeah, sure the the more part that i don't understand is that they figured out how to make glasses and it's a major blow to the other third parties i don't know if there's a huge maybe I, I there's an underground huge market for metal glasses i don't know about um that is one thing we Bob always Dylan say could, look like crap though Maybe that is true. Maybe, maybe Bob that's Dylan what they're knows. saying. I mean, they look fucking good, to be honest. Yeah. I think they're In just saying because, you know, other third parties have taken a run at this character a few times and they're just saying, our, we, we figured it out. Like, ours is going to be the best. Go for it, which I kind of like. Now, hopefully they can cash that check. And, and so far, what we've seen from Mars, it feels like they can, but for sure. they're, they're putting it out there. Um, oh, the skin tone is kind of weird, though, for Gus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Perfunctory oh, is apparently like Kramer at first. <laughs> just kidding. Oh my! Uh, I Why did they tag Kit and then? Put so I believe, on yeah, I believe. Don't quote me if I'm wrong, but I think Kit is the like exclusive retailer of Mars, right? Or like, oh okay, they have a pretty so, good yeah. relation with Kit. I think oh, they had um, issues with other websites not paying them, and so I think Kit is really 
where they advocate you purchasing from because yeah. you know you're going to get allegedly it. Allegedly, like some type of Wonderland type environments. So yeah. Kid is quickly wonders. becoming the sideshow of third parties. Oh, he's no the goat. No doubt about it, bro. Actually, yeah. you know what? We have, a, we have a fucking button for that. That's why he's the goat! The goat! <laughs> <laughs> so it, it helps a bit. Perfunctory means carried out with minimum effort or reflection. So other third parties have made this with little effort, I guess is what they're saying. I'll give you this back. Listen, I gave Oh, I, I, I love that clip. That's, that's the best it. clip we have ever had. Thank you, Marco, for that. Oh, boy. That is so funny. Um, let's see here. We have the Thunder Toys Ghost. Um, I will be honest. I have always fucking loved this costume. It looks like something out of Destiny. I I just love the look of this. I If it's cheap enough, if it's one day on a bargain bin... It it might be coming home. I fucking love the look of Ghost. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, <clears throat> I you know this is a third party figure, and you know, for quality's sake, it looks decent. But also, like in the movie, it didn't look like a very impressive suit. It was kind of cheesy, um, looking anyway. Uh if you keep the mask on, I think this is fine. That head sculpt is uncanny valley creepy. I don't like it. It's, it's, it's just something about it just gives rubs me the wrong way. I don't like looking at it. <laughs> it creeps me out. I don't think it's that bad, honestly, Dean. I don't remember exactly what the actress looks like, but I remember she's kind of got this striking, like really striking features and, and uh, light eyes, I think. She's a beautiful um, woman, for sure. Yeah. But I think as in terms of like third-party head sculpts, I, I feel like pretty minimal chance that it comes out like this, with, with this hair styled in this way and um, looking like with these details in terms of the sculpt itself, especially because Thunder Toys, I feel like, is a perfunctory... A third party company so um no i'm kidding i don't even recall what else they've done um <laughs> that yeah, was good that, <laughs> that was fucking I was awesome to, try to sneak it in there um but yeah. it's the biggest piece of dog shit jesus wow. <laughs> love you just keep these keep, keep these rolling here um, but yeah, no i think it like it looks pretty nice honestly like if with the sculpted or excuse me the mask sculpt on you could probably fit this pretty well on an ant-man shelf and again, the third party kind of fill in that uh, need for characters that I don't personally care about this character, but there's someone out there that was waiting for this one. So cool to have that option. Yeah, I think it's a good character to have done. I think it's it's necessary for Ant-Man, um, even though there's no yellow jacket yet. You hate to oh, see it, man. but uh, I think the head sculpt looks pretty good. And I don't know if it'll come out like that in production, but because uh, Thunder Toys... They did the the horrible um, Fantastic Four figure that just released, right? They did um, um, Human Torch, and that head sculpt is terrible. Oh yeah. Um, they did do the. Uh, I want to say they did the Spidey that I had the the version of Toby where he's in the um, yeah. the wrestling outfit, and that head sculpt wasn't terrible. So. Um, I think you got a 50-50 shot of it coming out looking Jesus like Christ. this. But either way, you got the mask, right? So uh, that's cool. It's cool, man. I might have to just get the Marvel Legends. I'm, I'm going to have to be a smart collector because I'm looking at this and I'm like, dude, I fucking forgot how much I love this suit. Do it. Bad fish has nothing. I'm say, so. I, I, you got to use your words, This is like guy. the biggest fastest pass for me um yeah definitely go marvel legends that's the best advice i can give you um, <laughs> was she you will... not cool in the movie i don't know i just think you will regret having this in your collection so quickly it's like i don't know uh, they're kind of they, they have interesting parts of the like their story is somewhat interesting in the movie but i do uh -huh. think they're somewhat of a you're never gonna like in in five years you're gonna forget what what they even did kind of thing oh, or wow. okay. i don't know I, I just feel like this character is not that great but i also am 
didn't think the movie was the mo- the most incredible thing either. But um, I don't know. I f- uh, if you want a representation for this, I wouldn't spend a whole bunch of money. I guess is my point. It's She's probably, cooler than Kang, and everybody wants that motherfucker. So. Wow, Kang, Kang was <laughs> dope Kang in Ant Man Three, I thought. And yeah, she, this, she was actually allegedly. a tougher villain than Kang in Ant Man Two. Yeah. Right. What was it? What was her like official name? Ghost, Ghost or something? Ghost. Yeah. Ghost, yeah. Yeah. So like, there's. She definitely has a definitive face, like that. Those definitive like features, Bro. but yeah, this is not a good sculptor. That me. looks like a sex doll. Yeah, it's it's like dead in the eyes more so than a the hot uncanny toys. valley. There's was, something that wrong. Was, that was a good phrase, yeah. Dean. Because totally yeah. that. But but bad. Is that why her mouth is to... open like that? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> it, it, it's like once you oh, like open it, it won't close the same way again. Yeah. Oh my God! Speaking from experience, um, my friend. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> no. Can, can, can we give spoilers for this movie? Uh, yeah, it's fucking like five might, years old. I was gonna say. Just um, I was going to say something about the portrait, but I apparently I don't want to say it anymore because of the nasty <laughs> things yeah, you guys were Yeah, yeah, don't say. don't do it. <laughs> Just go ahead. That's no, why no. we're here. Yeah, no. No. Be your we'll authentic private... self. That's why people listen to the show, Zach. We say what's on our mind. What if it affects someone's <laughs> life? Yeah. Just look at the private chat. <laughs> they don't have to listen. That's, that someone may whoop your ass. Um, so bad fish, though. In terms of, um, yeah, in terms of like don't say passing that. on don't this say one. That. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of passing on this one, though, that I like that advice because these are the first ones to leave your collection where it's like, oh, a character that I kind of remember that was kind of cool yep. from a third-party company that kind of looks okay. There's a lot of kind ofs that add to, like, maybe you shouldn't unless you really, really absolutely love the character. What is... Um, oh, yeah. sorry, go on. Zach. Sorry, this is from the... This is not from the Quantumania, right? No, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Oh, shit, damn, this is a really old movie. I need yeah. to watch it. Um, I was gonna say this is the same actress from Ready or Not. Um, or no, no, Ready Player One. Sorry, um, she's like the Ready Player One. Yeah, Who's she's she the one that's chasing one? them down. Oh, really? For the evil corporation. Oh, I don't remember that. I don't, I don't remember either. that either. Yeah, she's, she's that movie's kind of low key. Pretty that was a sick. banger, bro. Yeah. Bro, Ready Player One's awesome as shit. We Might be one of the movie. best movies I've seen oh, in a long time. Oh wait, I, I have a hard time arguing with that. Like the first time I saw it, I was like, "Okay, too much going on." Like, nah, it's a Spielberg joint. Yeah, it's a great film. Yeah, it's definitely a movie you have to watch more than once because there's so much shit going on. You're not wrong. So much. I loved it the first time I saw yeah, it. Yeah, she's a great actress. Uh, let's uh, if everyone's good, we can. Uh... Now, like now, I have to look it up. Sorry, I. Ready player not cat ready or. We're Ready Player One cast. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I fucked you up. That's my bad. Jesus. So there's Olivia Cook. Uh, She's one of the oh, bad guys. Finale is Xandor. I'm... Yeah, too bad they made Olivia Cook so hideous in that, where she didn't want to, uh, you know, face the real world. Did she have like some birthmark or something some on her face? Some paint on her face. Yeah, I'm right? like, bitch, <laughs> bro, like stop. I'm it. hideous. It's like <laughs> shut the fuck up, dude. Oh yeah. Okay, I I swear to God, I thought this woman was uh, like African American in the movie. I didn't realize she was a white lady. Is she not? Just from all the, she's got to be. She might be. She's she's might mixed. be mixed race. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is she? Okay. In the film, I was just like, damn, that's a beautiful black woman. But now well, I'm looking at pictures, and I'm like, I don't know. Ant Man and the Wasp is a black woman. Oh, is she really? Yeah, her, she's darker her dad in this is, figure. Yeah, she's looking like Sammy her, Sosa in this her figure. Her parents what the fuck? are... Well, in the movie, <laughs> wow. parents are... Abrogated. Yeah, wow. this, this is not... high skin tone in this. I can't say yeah. that. Yeah, she, I feel like she I'm should pretty, be dark. I Marco's reaction was incredible. Oh, <laughs> it, that's not even offensive. That's just a fact. It's just... <laughs> oh, individual little strands for the... That fucking clip <laughs> every time, dude. I love Damn, that. Damn, this woman is beautiful. I'm gonna, I'm His reaction. She's a really is beautiful so woman. Good. Yeah. Can you show the audience what you're, uh, which picture you're looking at? I was looking at her feet. AI um, <laughs> anyways, uh, <laughs> present toys, the legendary warrior. Now we had seen the. Um, I think they just showed like a teaser image a few months ago, and um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel a bit. Maybe the pressure of the of the community's thoughts on this company are weighing on me, but it's like 
I don't know. I don't know if this is like a re-sculpt or a recast. I just don't know. But I do love um I do love this game, Breath of the Wild. Um I do love actually this may even be on the newer version of the game. No, this but is the, Breath of the Wild. This is Breath of the Wild. Okay. The portrait I think looks great. The Master Sword, the Hylian Shield. Um I don't remember him wearing a black cloak. I might have to replay that, but the Sheikah Slate looks good. The hands look great. Um, Dean, what is this little accessory? Do you know the right here next to the base? I have no that? idea what that is. I didn't play this game. Oh, okay. It looks good, man. I, I've i been wanting to get Victoria figure for the collection, and um, I don't know. It doesn't matter, Tremble, if they're black or white. I just, when I saw the, the figure, I was like, oh, she's a white woman? I thought she was... Anyways. Um, yeah, we saw that other company with their... Um, what's the second game called? Oh, God. The Tears of the Kingdom. Back Kingdom or yeah. Tears yeah. of the Kingdom. Yeah, we saw a company come out with their Tears of the Kingdom link. So seeing this, it's like, eh, it's pretty late. Um, I'm not a fan of the Screaming Sculpt. It's just not good. Uh, it doesn't look like Link at all the blank face it it's passable like if you need link on the shelf i think it's a cool outfit um plenty of accessories um kind of i mean i could think of like a couple other accessories you could include um but depending on how much this is i think it's fine um you know you're only going to use one head sculpt at a time anyway so i'm just you know, wouldn't use the screaming one ever. Um, does it say anywhere if, if those are die cast sword and shield? I guess it, they wouldn't be, but um, overall, I like it. I'd give it like a seven out of 10. Yeah. So, so I think I've expressed my reservations with present toys in the past where I was like, you know, they're announcing a bunch of stuff and not releasing a whole lot. And then recently they've been releasing a few, right? They had the Blade figure, I think a, a couple of Terminator figures and nothing that I saw seemed like incredibly strong. I think that they were nice third-party figures, but nothing that was like must-haves in my opinion. And so this link, you know, I'm always um, requesting more video game figures. And so that definitely fits that need. This isn't the costuming of the link that I would necessarily want in the collection, but it's cool that they're at least doing it. Um, so I would say if it comes out as close to this prototype as possible, that's a nice win for representation that we don't normally get in the 1.6 hobby. So present toys, keep doing your thing. Hopefully they can continue to improve on the quality, but it seems like they're they're on track to, to continue to release uh, lots of figures from really diverse properties. Yeah, I, I agree with Marco. I'm, I want to see more video game characters. I'm not the biggest Zelda guy, but I'd love to see... Uh, a new attempt at Master Chief and Jack and Dexter, Ratchet and Clank. Damn. Um, I like to see Jack and Dexter. So. There's a lot of potential when it comes to game stuff. Like I, I, I did, I have the, um, what's it called? The Red Dead 2, Arthur. I have the, um, the other one they're coming out with, um, Jack, not Jack. John Marston as well that they're coming out with from uh, though I'm trying to remember if that's present toys though. It's not present toys. It's um, limb toys. Limb toys. Sorry. And so just video game stuff. And then I have um, the Joel and Ellie. I feel like those might be present. I have to check. I literally was going to reopen them again. I opened them about a year ago. Um, no, just to so leave I have them in few. the box and I'll, I'll send you my address. <laughs> but I have uh, the Nathan Drake as well. So there are a few I've already got. This is really, really tempting. But seeing... Oh, that base is cool. Seeing this this come out, though, makes me think they got to eventually just come out with the Ocarina, Ocarina of Time. Like a green tunic. I want a green tunic. The blue is cool. The leather stuff on this chest and across his belt is pretty cool. So, But yeah, that sculpt is... Even the the other regular sculpt isn't that great, to be honest. Um, but the screaming sculpt is especially bad. But um, this is really tempting. Video game stuff. There's a lot of great options. Eddie was just listing a few that I would have wouldn't have thought of that 
was it lots. was it present toys who teased all the final fantasy figures or was that who was that i don't remember oh yeah i don't i don't remember. recall that dean yeah because they're starting off with Aerith, and then they teased like the whole line with like a what the outlines of the figures i want to right, say it was yeah. present toys but i don't remember if it was tremble said it was game toys no, no. Game Toys makes them currently, yes, but um, someone else threw their hat in the ring and they're coming out with Aerith first. Uh, we covered it. I want to say There it was, was like 10 first. Aeriths that we've covered, though. No, it was a lot of Tiffas we've covered. Oh, yeah, you're correct. Yeah, you're right. This this was one specific. I wish I could remember what it was right now. Let's Google it. Yeah, I'm Googling it. I, sorry, the ones I have are CC Toys Joel and Joel, Joel and Ellie. Oh, Toys Era. It was Toys Era who teased the line. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, video game. I mean, there's so many characters I want from video games. Um, yeah, like Eddie said, Master Chief would be awesome. Um, Aloy from Horizon would be fucking dope, bro. I've on. been after a, a classic. Laura Croft forever. Um, yeah. Luckily, someone already makes the Resident Evil figures. Just too bad they're so fucking expensive. Fucking damn toys. <laughs> That's what you say when you see the price. Damn. Um, yeah, so this is cool. Uh, Hopefully, Samus, more people Samus make more stuff. Cool. Dude, Ooh, Samus, Samus would, would be, be fucking bad. dope. Oh, yes, dude. They'd have to do it would right, you? though. That'd be tough. Die cast, though? Would Die go crazy. I mean, basically, be... just take the fucking what was the Figma one and just scale it up to twelfth or one six scale. It'd be perfect. Yeah. that's what they did with the three zero guts. It's like a like a big action figure. It's not like a six scale figure with armor. It's yeah. like a upscale figure. It's cool. There you go. Uh, I believe that is it. We did just have the uh, accessory shot. Uh, Big Fern, there. somebody made the GTA 5 trio in one six. Yeah, they. Yeah, go look. Thing. Go oh, look on Big yeah, Breda's channel. Yeah, yeah, Big Breda did them, and uh, um, uh, Justin did them. Did oh GTA 5? I would like a Caesar. The the ones on there, I feel like they oh. could have. If someone didn't took another shot at those GTA ones, though, I feel like they could do a better job. Like those ones are okay, as far as I remember. Yeah. Like the sculpts were a little, little off. Get it or not, um, boy, this was a, this was a crazy week. I do want to have a representation of Ghost in my collection. I think I'm gonna go towards Marvel Legends. Looking at prices, you can get it for thirteen dollars. So that's great. Uh, Shin and Balin, I love the characters. I think I'll pass. And Paul is likely coming home. But, you know, it's... Uh, I have to see. We we have some um, options that we can take advantage of. Um, you know, like the post says, there's a number of options depending where you live, depending um, how much you may want to spend at one time. Uh yeah, right now my my main option I think is um, collector zone or in art, um, and I think a lot of it will just depend on uh, payment plan options, um, how long I have to pay, uh, and I don't think the mouse is a huge consideration for me. I can just print a mouse. Um, what about you, Dean? Anything that you're getting or not getting? Oh man, the Balin and, and Shin are are. I mean, even after talking about them, we're still so tempting. So I'm, I'm probably going to end up with those. More likely than not. Uh, as for the Paul, probably not. It's a cool figure for sure, but I just, I don't have that love for Dune. And then he would be on, his, on the shelf by himself, and that would bug the fuck out of me. Um... What else did we talk about today? The Penny Link, wise. probably not. The Ghost, no. What'd you say, Seamus? Pennywise. Oh, Pennywise, no. I'm not a horror guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it for me. Yeah, it was, a, it was a tough week because that poll, that was one that I was locked in on. 
And like I said, in the past, I would have said, oh, let me go sculpt it. Let me save a few bucks. But rooted, I think that that character is going to be perfect for having a rooted representation on the shelf. Um, so yeah, so, so I had to go with that poll. And then again, Zach putting all the breakdowns because I was having a bit of anxiety because, you know, I need to have my best price. Um, it, we got it. We kind of got burnt a bit on the Superman. And so now it's like, okay, let, let's figure out exactly where to order from. Um, and at the end of the day, collector zone was that for me. Um, so lock that in and, and we were talking about the Shin and Balin and I'm like, okay, I didn't necessarily love that property, but the more that I look at these figures, you know, the, the fact that they are a uh, dark Jedi, that's super intriguing to me. So I had to add those as well. So it's like, you know, Eddie, Eddie, we were talking a bit, I think, um, on the side about just being disciplined. And, you know, Dean was talking at the start of the show about 700 real world dollars. And it's like, man, this stuff, I'm trying to think more critically about my purchases. But when the, when the hobby has so many really, really strong figures, it's hard to, to keep that discipline. So th both of those pre-orders clicking that, you know, I, I didn't do that lightly. Like I definitely have a plan to pay them off, but ooh, it hurt. It was an expensive, expensive uh, week. Can we highlight X Men's comment really quick? That's fucking hilarious. Eddie, you, <laughs> you look, look like you're about to either sell me a car or a house. <laughs> it's the Jesus. haircut, man. The haircut look, looks good. Um, kind of look like the get it or not guy. I fucking hate those car salesmen guys. <laughs> um, okay, get it or not. Uh, that Elvis is probably a get it for sure. If that comes out, um. I, I would love to have Elvis in the collection. So the so this is what I was saving for the Paul. So when I was talking about Paul on other streams, because we hadn't had ours yet, and I, I hadn't seen Dune 2 when I was talking about it. And um, so I was like, I'm as of now, like, I love Dune 1. I don't need Paul, though. Um, and I don't think that opinion would change seeing Dune 2. And Marco was like, I think once you see it, you're going to want it. <laughs> um, Dune 2 is amazing. It is a hell of a theater experience. So anybody that's like, oh, I'll just watch it at home. It's, I watched it in Dolby and it's almost 4D how much the seats shake when you're Jesus. watching it. It's an insane movie. At the I'm very so jealous least, of the Dolby, bro. That's the best way to watch shit. Minus IMAX. It's the most insane movie I've seen in the theater for like a theater experience. It's insane. It, it's really, really sick. Uh, so I couldn't recommend seeing it in the theater more. I, I got to go see it in IMAX. That It's insane. Um, I think I'm still able to skip Paul, though. <laughs> I I loved it, but I don't think I need I need him in my collection. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm good. But I think Dean's okay. going to love the movie. Dean, you got to. Zach, you haven't seen it either, Dune 2 yet? No, I need Dude. to go see it. I'm going to the it's theater insane. next for uh, End of Evangelion. They're doing like a re-showing uh, in the United States, um, which I know you guys love that movie. Uh, actually, you haven't seen it. It's the one of the original movies. And uh, next is Dune. It's on the list. Yeah, I'm trying to get my, my one of my coworkers to go with me, but yeah, it's for sure. It's on the list. No popcorn bucket either. You hate to see it. I didn't know that. They didn't <laughs> nah, dude, I'd be, be fucking that bucket, bro. Jesus. <laughs> Did you see the... the okay, dinosaur? maybe. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll mention it uh, post I saw it, show. Badfish. But the dude on TikTok? Yeah, I saw Wait, it. Wait, what? Dude who, you, have you ever seen the dude on TikTok? This might be an After Dark topic, but who finds... He calls them units. <laughs> He he basically creates custom uh uh what's the word pocket pocket <laughs> things yeah oh okay uh, and he takes the Dune one and like perfects Damn, bro. it yeah so send me the link bro send me the link he's on TikTok send me the link bro send me the TikTok shop link or what send me the link bro I uh, I will it's pretty funny but yeah the he's he's got uh perfects it as in it looks exactly like a popcorn bucket that you could do things too but anyways um the yeah the dune dune 2 i re, i we need to find a babysitter to get this to watch this movie but um beyond that i think if i see the movie i'd be really tempted but it, i i do try to think this could be a 
another Star Wars figure that I really am haven't pre-ordered yet that I want to or something like that. So I'm would probably try to hold off when it comes comes to that. That link was pretty cool looking though. But again, same idea with I th I just am trying to stay focused with Star Wars stuff and so cuz if I dip into the Ahsoka line, I'll probably want Balin and Shin to go cuz man, that Ahsoka line with Sabine and whatnot are just yeah, I really like it. There we go. Uh, we have a 15% off discount code with our friends over at Collector Zone. This does work on the Paul Inart. Uh, it does require a full pay on the pre-order. Uh, but it's with code CW. Again, CW. That's 15% off with Collector Zone. Be sure to check them out at CollectorZone.com. They do a ton of cool stuff for the community. And we are thankful for them for partnering with us and allowing us to do some of the cool things that we've done this year. Uh, we also want to thank, uh, actually, we don't have a kit code for this one, but we'll get one. We'll work on it. That is what we shall do. Uh, let's see here. Junk drawer. We got a lot of junk in this drawer, and we're starting with the tragic news. Akira Toriyama, the um, manga creator of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super, passed away at the age of 68. Uh, his uh, Bird Studio or Capsule Corporation Tokyo released a statement saying, We are deeply saddened to inform you that the manga creator Akiri Toriyama passed away on March 1st due to a subdural uh, hematoma, a acute subdural hematoma. He was 68 years old. It is our deep regret that he still had several works in the middle of creation with great enthusiasm, and he would have had many more things to achieve. However, he has left many manga titles and works of art to this world. Thanks to the support of so many people around the world, he's been able to continue his creative activities for over 45 years. We hope that Akira Toriyama's unique world of creation continues to be loved by everyone for a long time to come. And uh, they go on to say that his services will be private. Uh, they're not asking for flowers or gifts or visitings or offerings. And, uh, you know, respectfully ask that his family be left alone with, um, you know, not to be bothered. So, um, Dragon Ball Z was, I think, one of the most formulative shows in my youth. I think growing up, ironically, I didn't love Dragon Ball as a kid. I thought the pacing was slow. And when you see a fucking Super Saiyan, it's kind of hard to go back to Dragon Ball. Um... As a young adult, Dragon Ball was very formulative. And, um, you know, when Vivi was born, GT was, was the one that we watched a lot. Um, it has been a huge part of my life in every phase of my life. And um, this this was one that hit hard, I think, um, this passing. And, you know, it, it, especially with so much cool stuff on the horizon... Uh, he was working on a new show, uh, just uh, obviously superheroes released last year. A lot of people really loved that. So um, he was he was the guy there, right? I think a lot of the fans kind of accepted that if Akira Toriyama said it wasn't canon or that, you know, he was kind of like the final word on Dragon Ball. And so going forward, I think it's going to be interesting to see how the, the company moves forward. Um, but, you know, it's... Uh, it's happened and and uh it's it's incredibly sad but uh yeah it's it's it, this one this one hurt a lot to be honest yeah um one of the first vhs tapes my dad bought me he had to go to the bank one morning and like right around the from the bank was a blockbuster on west avenue and he was like i just picked something they had like a sale going on and i saw this little vhs tape with the words dragon ball on it and i was like that looks cool fell in love with it immediately and then it was like a couple years later they sure was doing dragon ball z i only had the one vhs of dragon ball so when it came out on tv i was like oh my god this is great i didn't know you know there was more of this and um yeah i mean dragon ball uh, dragon ball z i I watch Dragon Ball Z, I don't know, maybe like once a week. I'll like throw on like a Vegeta kill compilation or Goku versus Frieza and just watch the fight, you know, because it's like a fucking two hour fight. So just like 
you know, kill the night and, and you know, watch it or, oh, I gotta watch the uh, Android saga and, you know, throw it on or even something as funny as like Dragon Ball Z Abridged, like, or listen to the music, like the music is always really good. We had the uh, composer on the show uh, a few years ago. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Bruce Falconer. Yeah. Which was huge for us. I mean, yeah, that was that's a fantastic still crazy. interview. Yeah, that was yeah. amazing. I, yeah, I forgot about that. That was really cool. Yeah, like you said, it's just like such a huge part of my life. And like, I mean, little things like collecting. Like, I bought so much Dragon Ball Z stuff. Uh, drawing. I learned how to draw, drawing Dragon Ball Z stuff. You know, you know, seeing what was on paper and then trying to replicate it. And I mean, and it was just fucking like devastating what my cousin you know because he also is an artist and we grew up drawing dragon ball z together and watching it and it literally felt like a punch to the gut i, I was i forgot i think i might have been in a chat with Badfish, but i was like oh my god and like what i was like fucking akira toriyama passed away like it was just like what the fuck and you know all week i've been seeing so many other mangakas you know post about uh, my uh, mangaka is the uh, person who creates manga okay i've never heard that word before so i had to ask <laughs> yeah um uh, uh, i literally could not name all the artists because there's so many but it's like I started my manga because of Akira Toriyama. The only reason yeah. I'm here is because of Akira Toriyama. I, I, maybe like 15, 20 different um, manga artists. There you go. Um, you fucking... How dare you? Um, you know, pay tribute to Akira Toriyama. It's, it's, uh, it's sad, but it's also kind of beautiful to see like, what kind of impact he had on people um and uh yeah it's it's it, it really was like actually devastating it's like fuck that sucks um so you're right very bummed yeah it, it was crazy um i because i didn't even know like that he had any issues or anything it's, it just was out of the blue you know and he was 68 is pretty young i feel like you know so like yeah that's insane dude especially you know we're getting so much dragon ball z content to this day it's crazy um yeah like same everything that dean said like i drew uh goku and vegeta all the time in high school and middle school and um played the video games were like a big part of playstation 2 days i think and then um yeah, Dragon Ball Z was amazing as a kid, and me and my brother would, uh, my grandpa had a pool growing up, and me and my brother would do Kamehameha's at each other, like, in <laughs> the pool, awesome. because he like, throw all the water on each other, it, yeah. like, literally all the time we were in there, to the point where, like, my mom and my grandpa would get super annoyed that we were yelling that at each other all the time, <laughs> and, um, yeah, Goku, I mean... I, don't, I feel like that arguably Goku is the most iconic character of all time other than Superman. And like whenever you do like, like, oh, who could beat Superman or who could beat Goku? Like there, that was always like the most iconic matchup to me. It was like, yeah, Goku and Superman. So it's like, dude, Goku is the shit, you know, like, and I feel like so many other anime characters are based off of like goku like oh, that kind of character um so yeah it's it's insane it's it's amazing to love dragon ball z and then like even um like adriana's family like i hear this a lot like dragon ball z it's either dragon ball z or simpsons right dragon ball z or simpsons like a lot of kids that grew up speaking spanish learned english watching dragon ball z or simpsons so wow um yeah it's it's a crazy crazy one for sure there was this um <clears throat> tweet uh, apparently it was either confirmed or like hard to falsify but mexico loves 
Dragon Ball Z. He yeah. loves it. To the point that Japan had to formally ask Mexico to stop allowing like mass gatherings of viewing parties. Like we're not talking like me having Dino. We're talking a whole a soccer whole stadium. Yeah. A city watching the same <laughs> showing at once. Because it was it was like causing financial harm to um, you know these companies, and uh, one of the tweets I saw was that the cartels agreed to like a ceasefire for you know Kira Toriyama's passing, yeah, uh, out of respect, which is like wow. fucking crazy. So that was that was not, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> well, I I if it saw is true, that it's fucking and wild. then other tweets that it was true, so. Yeah, Who knows? Maybe, yeah, you guys, um, it is apparently massive there, though. Apparently, cartel activity was reduced, at least is what they could prove. But That's uh, always good. Do you remember yeah. uh, growing up, the hairstyle, like having spiky hair was really popular yeah, yeah, all the fucking, way around yeah. because of like Super Saiyan hair? I had that hair all the time in middle school, and I even dyed it blonde just to be like yeah, Super bro. Saiyan, dude. So I feel like Dragon Ball Z is... Like, I a Mexican right there. Desperately need you to find a photo. I please. Can, all of my photos are pictures of me with that hair, so that's not gonna be. Did hard, y'all? Did y'all guys. used to go like into a hot tub and pretend you were in the fucking healing pod? Little <laughs> <laughs> the bubbles oh, are dude. Dude, shit. That's what I would do. Uh, <laughs> Avengers says, as a kid, I would use any, <clears throat> excuse me, any beach volleyball I could find and do a kamehameha. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um. Let's uh, excuse me. I just gotta quickly say I remember yeah, tracing Dragon Ball Z as well with a light box. Those were like some of the first things I did, and then also trying to find VHS. Dean just mentioned the VHS tapes. I remember only being able to watch it because my friend had VHS tapes, and it was impossible to find otherwise. So there we go. That was actually a few years ago. So um, <laughs> yeah, Canada just got Dragon Ball VHS. <laughs> <laughs> they just got to Z. <laughs> They've been dragging ball this whole time. They've been dragging ass. Wow, um, good one. Marvel Studios has fired X Men. <clears throat> excuse me, X Men ninety seven showrunner Bo DeMeo. Um, Marco, take over this for one second, please. Yeah, I got you. So yeah, so apparently they the, the show comes out next week, which I didn't realize. So incredibly hyped over that, um, but they moved on from the showrunner. Apparently, he deleted all his social media. Like, his digital footprint is basically gone for the most part in terms of accounts that he controls. So, I've seen some speculation. I don't necessarily want to speculate here, but it doesn't seem very good. It doesn't seem like a very positive sign. And I'm just hoping, I mean, it's, there's not really a good outcome, but I'm hoping that it's not related to the quality of this show and just maybe something heinous that he did personally, which again isn't really good. But I'm hoping that the two are, are very separate. So, we shall see. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like X-Men, so I wasn't going to watch this anyway, but yeah, that's never a good sign. Uh, not only did you get fired, but all of a sudden all your social media is deleted, like in the same week. That's fishy. Got fired on his day off. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There we go. Um, Netflix announced that the Avatar will return. Seasons two and three of Avatar The Last Airbender are coming. This is the new live action adaptation. Obviously, book one is water, book two, earth, and book three, fire. A little, eh, I don't know. To make it in three seasons, um, when Aang never really learned water bending at all in the first season, um, not quite sure how they're going to manage that. Um, I will say, if, if, well, this is true, it is true, but they need to start filming this shit like a year ago because that kid that plays Aang is already like getting past that age. And if they're going to take like two or three years to do this, then he's going to be real old. Um, because this in, in the canon, it's a one year, um, story for the main, uh, last airbender show. So, I mean, um, they got to get on the shit quick. He's already like much older than he was in season one. And he's already going through puberty, so it's just like his voice is changing. It's just it's they gotta like get on this shit quick. Yeah, I mean we saw it happen with Harry Potter, and they made that work. Yeah, but Harry Potter is a, a um, movie that takes place over like eight years. This is a sh- one year. Is Hogwarts an eight year school? I feel like it's yeah, not. they're year they're like year seven or year eight by the last uh, book. God damn. 
Fucking get a move on, dude. Go to college or something. Right, Imagine bro. Get a dog. You could be a doctor. Right? Fuck, Fucking dude. wizard. You don't got no GED. You got nothing. Right? Anyway. Oh, <laughs> oh you got a wand. Cool. And I a fucking bird. <sighs> bro, you got to flip burgers. Yeah. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. I did with that for years. Uh, due to VFX artists on why the visual effects were so much better than recent blockbusters. Wait, why was that noise so good? <laughs> Specific, specificity of vision, the way the footage is captured and blocked, creative choices on assets made early in consistency. I think this is probably the biggest one, Marco. Less execs meddling late in the process. Um, tell me about this, guys. Yeah, I will just say, right, so we're, so we're, some of the most successful films that we've seen over the last year, over the last few years, are directors with specific visions. And so, you know, studios love to meddle, but we got to just, you know, whether it's a complete disaster or a complete success, you got to just let a, a director kind of see their vision through. And I, I read somewhere or heard somewhere that Denny Villeneuve had, had been, you know, doing storyboards about Dune part one and part two for like years, like he's been obsessed with this. So he's got a really specific vision. And I think ultimately that led to a, a smoother process in terms of their production, in terms of the VFX. So I'm hoping that, you know, studios take note, which they probably won't. They always take the wrong, th the wrong lesson from all of these, but take a note like, Hey, we just give these things time to bake, let the, the, the director see their vision through. And hopefully that leads to less crunch from all the artists that are supporting them. I agree. I agree. Let's see here. We have new Super Mario Brothers animated film is officially in development. This is releasing in theaters April 3rd, 2026. Sean said he's frustrated wow. with the live action. I enjoyed it. I definitely have. It definitely has its problems, though. With Avatar? But, uh, yeah, with Avatar. I, I liked it. I'll say I've that. never watched any of it. Oh, dude, you're missing out. Some of the best anime of all time, in my opinion. Is it really anime? All right, let's move on. Uh, the Batman. Oh, I was just going to say, I hope it's actually Super Mario Bros. They fucking like, did Luigi dirty in that movie. Like, he gets like one scene at the end. I was like, what the fuck? I, I wanted to see them adventure together. So hopefully this movie fixes that because I want to see Luigi. Because well, honestly, yeah. Luigi's the fucking goat. You know, Mario, have you guys watched the movie? Yeah, the original great movie. movie, great film. The, this movie, yeah. yeah. Okay, John Mario Spencer, Leguizamo, right? Mar yeah, no, no, God, no, not that one. Jesus uh, Christ! Mario spends the whole movie learning how to how to do the the Mushroom Kingdom stuff. Uh, Princess Peach is teaching him. You know, he's struggling. He learns. He becomes the hero. What did Luigi do the whole movie? He was a prisoner. And what did he do at the end? He fucking kicked just as much ass as Mario because Mar Luigi is the goat, not Mario. Wow. Luigi kept up with Mario while sitting in a cage. So in more Luigi, words, goddamn it. In other words, Dean. That's why he's the goat! The goat! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Batman Part 2, or the sequel rather, has been delayed to October 2nd, 2026. Uh, the movie was originally slated for October 3rd, 2025, so it is a one-year delay, and or essentially a 364-year delay, and uh, I fucking hate that. I, I get it, but fuck, man. That's Do a long-ass time. What is there to get, honestly? I understand. I believe Because... It. Are they fitting this into the new DC timeline? Because if they're not, why the fuck are they even bothering with this? Well, we're going to have two fucking Batman movies to see? Like, what yeah. the fuck is happening? It's its own thing. It'll always be its own thing. It's so annoying, dude. DC, like man. They just... And I enjoyed the Batman movie. Oh, sorry, Pappin. I was going to say, DC just has no... Direction. No semblance of direction of anything. They're just like, oh, let's just make another Batman. Let's just make an. Let's, that's why it's like, it, it still blows me away that they're allowing this many Jokers to be made. You think they would want some sort of break where people aren't tired of this, like J and D making a Joker in our Hot Toys? Like they're throwing out this license. 
I think DC just gives out the license as much as possible to see what sticks. But when does uh, Superman know. Legacy come out? Next year, right? So maybe, maybe the you know the DC fans Messiah James Gunn is trying to work oh, him God. into it because oh my God, don't say that he's the right age is for the Superman guy? that they have. So. I could see them. I could see James Gunn being like, "Let's tie him in. Why not?" You know. So, I, I, but I, I mean, think he already, announced, he already announced his own Batman property, though, right? The Brave and the Bold. So I think he has a very distinct vision for what he wants in Batman, and this is kind of an Elseworlds concept, which doesn't make it any less confusing. It's um, but exhausting. But I'm I, I'm actually okay with this delay if, for whatever reason, that equ- equates to more quality because this is going to be compared to the dark Knight because the first film already was the The sequel to it, you know, is going to be like, okay, are you dark Knight or are you not? Right. And so this has got to be an absolute banger or else there's no use in even doing it. And so hopefully they're, they're kind of refining the story. Take the Joker out of it. We don't need Joker in a second Batman film. Please, please remove the Joker because you're just, again, just bringing comparisons on. So go in a different direction and and let's, uh, let's make a banger in, in a few years. There yeah. you go. Uh, James Gunn has confirmed that Peacemaker Season 1 is not canon to the DCU, though Season 2 will take place after the events of Superman. Oh, my so God, there's dude. Fucking that. shit or get off the pot. Make up your fucking mind, bro. God, dude, this is so... Fu- I'm so fucking sick of talking about DC. This is what I'm talking they about. They just have their heads all idea. the way... All the way up their ass. <laughs> <laughs> up there. Well, to be fair, he's probably saying that so he could use his wife for another role, whatever role he wants oh. to use her for. So. Oh, God. Is she the blonde? Yeah. She, he could use her in any role that he wants. <laughs> There's that. Uh, let's uh, blow through the last few of these. Godzilla Minus One wins the Best Visual Effects Oscar. Love to see it. Love the G-Man. Very cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, it was really cool to see. Uh, Sam Raimi reportedly says there's a chance of Spider-Man four happening. Love that. Would 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 really love to see that. Well, we're supposed to have two Spider-Mans now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And Sony are re-releasing all the Spider-Man films in cinemas to celebrate Columbia Pictures' 100 year anniversary uh, via Cinemark. Uh, Spider-Man uh, one is April 15th. Two is April 22nd. Three is April 29th. The Amazing Spider-Man 1 is May 6th, 2 is May 13th, Homecoming May 20th, Far From Home May 27th, and No Way Home June 3rd. Uh, so if you want to see those in theaters, which is very tempting to see Spider-Man 1 in theaters, uh, you can do so uh, starting in April. How is uh, there not a live-action Miles yet? That's insane. This is animated. He is technically ca- somewhat canon to the Homecoming universe. His yeah. uncle, the Prowler, Aaron yeah. Davis, yeah. is in the... Uh, and he was also in um, uh, Across, across the, the Spider-Verse. Across, across, that was a great Easter egg. So Eddie, the, the live-action version is oh, coming, yeah. though. They realize how yeah, popular that character is. It's insane. Yeah. Like, if they do Spider-Man 4, it would be cool if they brought in... Because they almost that would almost be a good enough age difference to have into the Spider-Verse version oh, yeah. in live-action with... Toby Maguire being Peter, Peter Parker. B, yeah. It would Damn. be so cool okay. to do that. Eddie, I'm going to give you one of these. Listen, I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Every time. It's the best thing ever. It is. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. If you, want, if you want to see all these movies, it's going to cost you anywhere from 60 to $70. Probably more. More. With, without snacks. Yeah. I own all these fucking movies. I'm just going to stay home. Like, uh, I'm not... Yeah, it'd, be, it'd be fun to cherry pick at least one to just go watch in the theater though just you know, spider-man bro just get out um let's see i don't have it i guess maybe i forgot to put it but uh jake paul mike uh versus mike tyson Netflix. oh fuck dude i want mike tyson to fucking i want him to destroy him off of his face please <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna happen though you're prepared to be disappointed no it's all fake it's floyd all fake. couldn't do it yeah um so there's that. Uh, let's see here. I did want to plug this. Um, we we don't talk about um, our Apple podcast that often, but if you have an iPhone, do do me a favor. Go to Apple Podcasts, 
look up collecting weekly you should be subscribed already if you're not subscribed but leave us a review it, it really is helpful we don't get a lot of reviews we never really ask for them but five star reviews really go a long way and we had some really cool milestones this week in canada and australia we'll talk about it in just a second but we got this wonderful review from dark sides undertow um on uh valentine's day they take a while to show up in itunes for some reason i don't quite understand why but uh, it's a stumbled on this show with very low expectations because the past experience with shows on pop culture and collectibles i was pleasantly surprised how knowledgeable and informative the show was not only do you learn a lot about current collectibles future releases but you do it while feeling like you're hanging out with friends it is a must listen for any collectors so we uh, appreciate the praise. review dark sides undertow actually we'll play the clip for yeah, you I'm right up. here uh let's see we we do appreciate the uh the review here's for dean that's high praise i don't know if we still have that hell yeah dude yeah i mean I you have that clip. same buttons i do um <laughs> but uh yeah if you can leave us a review it is helpful it means a lot to us and the milestone that we hit for the first time ever we broke the top 200 in the leisure category which if you're not familiar, leisure category is kind of fucking brutal. I really wish they had like a talk show category that we could be in because leisure is like the murder mystery podcast, the like Joe Rogan podcast, like all those like crazy. I don't know if Joe Rogan's actually on Apple, but anyway, all of like the the celebrities you can think of, like the um, bad friends, Kels brothers, two uh, one K. Yeah, um, all those are in the leisure category. So for us to hit one fifty nine. We actually hit, I think, as low as, like, um, back in um, September. I think it was 130 over here um, in Canada. And 173 in Australia on the week of March 7th to the 9th was really cool. Now, we dropped out of the top 200. But uh, for us to hit that milestone, like, in a huge country of ours that listens to us was, like, one of the coolest things ever. So we yeah, do appreciate cool. you guys that listen on the uh, audio uh, platform feeds. Shout out to all the Australians and the Canadians. I know most of the panel is Canadian already, so it's probably yeah. a. They're like, oh, Ben's on there and Badfish. We gotta, we gotta support. So, but shout out to the Canadians. I know we give you guys a hard time for not going to the moon, but we do appreciate you. Yeah, it is like half their country right there. So two kinds of countries, though. <laughs> oh my um, God. There we go. Uh, let's see here, Dean. We have a uh, a list here of uh, Patreonies. Yeah, beautiful list of beautiful people, and I'm gonna shout them out. A quick shout out to Ian C B, Renee Mendez, Eric Mariscal, Quinn Aguirre, King Louis, Mark Pearson, Paul Schreiber, Equan, Chris Valencia, Ben Thomas, Chris Letty, David Jones, Sam Gis, Daminator, Joao Breda, Thomas Clark, Eric Switzer, Six Guns, Figs, Billy Badfish, Toy Cartel, Sweet Sweet, Danny Lee, Deanie Martin, Stephen Cret. Big old Fern, Cesar Marquin, Mark Phillips, Lisa Martin Bobonski, Rick DeGregorio, Ricardo Valdez, Jose CZ, Irwin Azucena, the illustrious Rainer, Alan Morgan, Two Cothery, Wa, Derek B, Arias Portillo, Alvin J, Aurelis Delgado, Jazz Carroll, Joe Ridley, Pablo Meza, D Rock, Matt Clevenger, Seth Tucker, CC, 3PO, Scott Smith, Domaton, Stephen Percha, Sean Usby, Scott Bradley, Big Pimps. Stephen Maria Stanley, Eddie Manzanares, Louis Bennett, Chip Perrin, Jimmy Hernandez, Gigi the Judgmental, and Brenton Palmer. Um, if you guys want your beautiful names read out at the end of the show, and a special place in our hearts, join the Patreon. Zach, tell them all about it. Yeah, Patreon benefits for March and April are the Ox Diver sticker and the Junk Drawer sticker. Uh, we just shipped um, the January, February stuff uh, yesterday, so you guys should be getting those very soon. Um, and Dean at the Dream Martin uh, did his wonderful artwork on these two stickers. Very cool there. Uh, membership starts at $5 for the digital tier, $7.50 for the first tier that gets you stickers, $15 if you need help with figure fixes, and $25 for a Pog Deluxe set and doubles of all the stickers we send. One for you to rock, one for you to stock, and uh, we appreciate you guys' support. Uh, YouTube channel members, we have Absolute Irwin, Alvin J, Andrew Gibo, Benjamin Hansen, Big O' Fern, Bob Dylan, CC3PO, Chris V, CT603, DJ, Daminator, Doc Smizzle, Equan, Fat Batman, Gare Bear, Godo Spotchka, Gotham Cenobites, Justin Sportscard, LV Avenger 702, Mark Pearson, Mike Litteris, Money Mendez, 
OG Fan, OMFG Rick, One Six Figure Focus, Paul Schreiber, Philip the Fool, S Beam, Sam Gist, Scar and Lord, SpongeBob, Square Balls, Sunnyvale Russ, The Ben Thomas Show, and Toy Mafia. You can join us on the um, channel memberships uh, as a Patreon, uh, if you're a Patreon member, rather, for 99 cents or 2.99. If you are not, you can join the Peanut Gallery. You get loyalty badges and custom chat emojis. Uh, we also have a Tee Public if you want to rock some swag. That is there. Uh, a lot of these are drawn by Dean. Some of them are uh, made by me, and Manny has made a lot of them as well. And uh, we love them. Taking a look at the network, we have OFAC uh, and Small Talk alternating Thursdays. Uh, Mind Flayers Web, I believe we should be playing likely on Saturday after dark, Wednesdays at 1030 and Collecting Weekly Live Tuesdays at 830. Uh, question of the week, Brenton. Um, has uh stepped down so we want to thank him for all that he's done with that program he ran it for quite a long while and we appreciate all that he's done uh dean and i will be uh continuing on question of the week um at least for a little bit we'll see how we like it uh if it's a uh show that uh, uh we can work into our schedules uh we'll keep it going um if not it had a great run i think it almost is at 90 episodes so Definitely want to try to save that show and the body of work that Brenton had put together. So uh, you may be seeing us this uh, Saturday or Sunday on a question of the week. So be sure to tune in and answer and we'll read your comments uh, the next week. But uh, yeah, as far as shout outs go, um, yeah, shout out to anyone that leaves us an Apple podcast review. Like I said, five stars really helps. We had a couple dinguses leave us one star reviews to troll us and that kind of took our numbers down quite a bit. So we're slowly creeping back up to that 4.8 star rating so any sorry review, my finger slipped <laughs> any review that you can leave is very helpful as long as it's not a one star review that's what she um, said but yeah anyone else have any shout outs they want to give uh shout out eddie for that awesome finger on a butthole joke that was i didn't go on her i heard that thank you thank you <laughs> yep uh do i have any shout outs shout out bashish think... for replacing yeah, sh- canada yeah. with another canadian so, yeah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, great, great Captain job, Batches. Canada for Miss Canada. Great job that's being right. Canadian, sir. <laughs> wow, way better than Ben, and people can actually tell us apart. So that's a big. I almost too. didn't even realize Ben wasn't here. It's crazy. Well, I know. Wow. It's just like <laughs> shout out ben to Ben. Hope you're having a good here. time. What the hell? It's been what three weeks? Two weeks? I told him it's called a uh, quiet quitting, right? Ben is the new. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah. Ben is the that's new. That's a good one. Uh, Marco on LWO. Like, yeah. Will he be there? Will he not be there? You never know. Tune in you next week know. on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> no, I'm just wow. Right. That was pretty good. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> I, just, I heard it in my head the second he said Dragon Ball Z. He's probably getting um, some Muad'Dib right now, you know? Wow. wow. He's using a sandworm. <laughs> I see my guy. Pretty sure he's with his mom, so. Jesus. I take wow. it back. Take it back. Take it back. Uh, anyways, uh, do we have any other shout outs that we want to give? Let me think. Let me think. Um, shout out to everyone playing Helldivers with us. It's been really fun. Yeah. Got our shit kicked here and there, but uh, it is fun. So, Hell yeah. Join Patreon. We'll play Helldivers with you. Anyways, we love you guys. Catch you in the next episode. And uh, never forget, I'm Zach. I'm Dean. I'm Marco. I'm Eddie. I'm Badfish. I'm Listen again. <laughs> and I'll catch you on the next episode. <laughs> Bye.